You're not you're not on tape. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in the interest of bugging you, um, we talked last week about uh, responsibility for certain sidewalks. Did you say you would clarify that? I will clarify that we, yes, we have no bylaw, so there are it's no consequences if people fail to clear the sidewalks. Because there's no bylaw, there is no liability, it's still a town liability. Um, it's it's up to you. It's, well, you have to identify yourself, Mr. Finn. I, I did. Oh, oh, did you? Okay. Um, did you put your address on? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Didn't register. Um, anyway, so we we are going to as soon as we can figure out how we're going to pay for stuff. We I'm sure the sidewalks will get cleared, but uh, we just can't add to the deficit at this time. So I can't promise you that we're going to clean up this, you know. Uh, we also talked about uh, changing lines in one town just like this, but the basic plan on the Uh We'll have to look up another word that says that you will have, that is responsible. I meant to do that. Chris and I will work on putting it up. It still is, is I don't want to say the responsibility because we talked about that, but it is the um some the owners of the, the property adjacent to the sidewalks were asking to clear the sidewalks somehow. We're not saying responsible. I, I know, I know. Thank you. I know. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, there was another, uh, Bruce, you were on there? Yes, I am. Okay. What, what's your public comment? Okay, hopefully, hopefully you might give me a couple extra minutes, but uh, I have been, I don't have a Facebook account, but I kind of monitor it, and I am just kind of fed up with all the uh, comments that have been on there based on a lot of misinformation. Before I forget, I want to thank the board for their uh, uh, effort and diligence and understanding to put up with an awful lot of this. And I, you know, since I did work in town politics for a while, I do understand that uh, it's a very tough job and you make the best decisions as you can at any particular point, uh, point in time. Um, whether everybody agrees or disagrees is immaterial, but you do your best. Anyway, based on some of the comments, one of the biggest one, and I guess where it should start is a little bit misunderstanding of taxes. Everybody seems to think that you people, the select board, uh, uh, just had, just have overseer of the assessors and the assessors just willy-nilly willy decide what the valuations are in the town and everything else. That is not the case. It has nothing to do with what you need for money. It has to do with a state law called Proposition 2.5. I sat on the assessors for seven years. We are overlooked with by the state with a fine tooth comb. We cannot, the assessors cannot willy-nilly adjust housing just to be uh, uh, values just to match a dollar amount needed by the town. The town's mandated to stay within the proposition two and a half guidelines. With that said, the uh, uh, misinterpretation seems to be that uh, uh, because uh, you were not able to get the uh, this last request for authorization for a bond passed that uh, this is a retaliation thing. And I don't understand that you just can't move this stuff. The other part of that is, is everybody says they raise their taxes and you keep spending money. Well, the fallacy is this past year, the voters, which I believe in this last town meeting, a total of 176, I'm sorry, 167 voters came out out of, I think, around 3,900 to vote for a budget, and they voted to spend $680,000 more than they did last year. It has nothing to do with what the select board wants or does not want. It has to do with your friends, your neighbors, your family, whoever went out to vote or did not vote has judgment call over what is spent. And this seems to be constantly misconstrued across the internet. The decisions that are made are based on the budget that those 167 voters passed. It is not on anybody else's. 
the decision as far as paying what's gone went on for the uh, uh, this summer as far as that that was done under the state law which allows for uh, determinations by the select board for public health and safety everybody complained about what you did but believe me I can't even imagine what people would be saying if you did not patch those roads and you did not open them up if you stuck jersey barriers across everything else much less the chance that anybody might not have been able to receive any emergency service that might have been necessary whether it be fire department dpw uh, ambulance service any of those services would have been cut off from a, uh, a lot of those areas and it just seems a shame that nobody seems to understand that the uh we have had so many comments. I mean, there again, I said 167 voters came out. There's hundreds of negative votes as far as what's on Facebook right now. If even a quarter of those negative people that know how to run the town came out and either voted and or spent some time on one of those committees, then maybe instead of creating all this negativity, try to help to make a solution. Nobody has a solution. If it, if it was that easy, it wouldn't be a problem. We've elected three people, whether you disagree or agree with them, that is immaterial. They are our elected officials. They are doing the best they can. They, I'm sure every one of them, I know when I have talked to them, every one of them is wide open to any kind of constructive criticism and or help with possibly making a solution. You can't do that and they're not gonna to listen to you if you're gonna hide yourself behind a screen and all to do is belittle all the people that are governing this town. It's not just like board, there's a tremendous amount of other people that do the same. Getting back to the budget, okay, there again, 167 voters voted to spend $17.5 million for the fiscal year 2024. Of that, $11.7 million is for the education system alone. It only leaves the town with 5.77 million to operate the whole town for all the rest of the employees and the operations, the equipment and everything else that goes with that. So it just is. And I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, I appreciate so much your support, okay. but I'm going to have to wind you up pretty soon because we have a public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, no. I think, I think uh, most people got my gist and uh, there again, thank you for uh, uh, taking the brunt of the situation that nobody else wants to seem to speak up and, and defend you. So take care. Thank have you. a good night. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks, I just Bruce. want you to know, we really appreciate it. Um, so moving on, we have a scheduled hearing at 6.15. It is now um, 6.18. Mm -hmm. uh, Treehouse Brewing Company, uh, this relates to changes to the occupancy of the liquor license pursuant to general laws 19C and 19H, which is the farmer brewer pouring license for um, malt and wine and distilled um, spirits. So why don't you all come up? Um, motion to open the hearing. Yes. Uh, do I have a? Are you making the motion? I'm read it. Or, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, notice a public hearing. The select the select board as a local licensing authority for the town of Deerfield will hereby hold a public hearing on December twenty seventh, twenty twenty three, at six fifteen p.m. on the application of Treehouse Brewing Company Inc. located at one Community Place, South Deerfield, Mass. Application to further amend Mass General Law Chapter one thirty eight, Section nineteen C N farmer brewer pouring pursuant to mass general law chapter 138 section 19h to increase the total occupancy to 5,000 for the service of malt beverages wine and distilled spirits throughout all licensed uh, premises the, the hearing held. isn't for treehouse yes it yes. is really yes yes meetings are being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation for purposes of in-person attendance the town will of deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of the south deerfield municipal offices 8 conway street south deerfield mass um, with remote participation um, on the hearing and on our uh, agenda you'll find the uh, toll-free number if you'd like to call in is 833-548-2276 
the meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 570012. Um, on our calendar and on the hearing, you'll also see a Zoom link, which you can ju join and people have joined by Zoom. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, um, we'll open the hearing. Uh, wait, is there another? So there's some other brothers died today. Yeah, I think oh, there is there a second hearing notice. Um, yeah, I don't... yeah, I have a do second have hearing a, notice here. On the oh, we'll always be young oh. and mine. <laughs> yes. right. yeah. Can anybody oh. online please mute? Thank you. Um, the select board, as the local licensing authority for the town of yes. Deerfield, hereby hold a public hearing on December 27, 2023, at 615 on the application uh, of Treehouse Brewing Company, located at one community place, South Deerfield, Mass. Application to amend Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 19C, and Farmer Brewer Pouring Permit to increase occupancy to 4,994 within uh, the farmer brewery premises. All the same toll-free number and okay. meeting ID and passcodes are identical. So okay. motions to open the hearing. Is... The second, for that one. second. Okay. Um, introduce yourselves. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Great. Um, Sarah Maggie Warren, I'm the Chief Rural Officer. Well, you know what? You'll have to get into the mic. Yep. <laughs> our, our, we're not so great. You yeah. have to speak right in. How's this? this good? Perfect. Thank yeah. you. So Sarah Maggie Morin, I'm the Chief Growth Officer for Trias Brewing Company. It's very nice to be here again. Just yeah. a little microphone trick here. Hi, okay. I'm Allison Maisley. I am the Regulatory Specialist for Treehouse Brewing Company. Thank you. Hello, Dan Gordner, Senior Events Manager for Treehouse. Welcome. Thank you, Dan. And Thank then you. we're also joined via Zoom. I, I think I know I saw um, your lawyer and I think I saw Damien and who else was there? Is there is there some way you can? So I have uh, Mark Borenstein, who uh, has worked yeah. with the town um, over the past few years, representing Trios Brewing Company. And then also our uh, co-founder and president, Damien Goudreau, is, is yeah. on as well. Okay. Welcome. All right. Um, okay. All right. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Sorry for the uh, late December public hearing. I uh, hope to make it pretty, you know, brief for you. I made a little slide deck. Hopefully you guys got that yesterday, but it's just to um, have something for a visual for us. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. And Trevor, I think when we do the end of things, um, technically, whichever notice had the 4,994 has to come first Got it. before the 5,000 because the 4,994 is the expansion of the brewery. And then the, that allows then for the expansion of all other beverages to 5,000. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Technicalities, right? Hey, they're important. Yes. I don't want to screw up on them. <laughs> so um, we are here today to ask for... Um, you to grant us permission to increase our farmer brewery 19 cn license to 4994 this is for the purpose of less administrative work for you guys so we would like to get to that number to showcase some larger concerts over the summer outdoors and other temporary events like our half marathon in addition to that brewery expansion, as I mentioned, for the ordering, um, along with that, we also have to expand under 19H, our pouring access to all other beverages. That would be the 5,000. Mm -hmm. The reason that the numbers are different is due to where the distilling area and the winery are. They have to have their own separate tasting area mm -hmm. that isn't in the brewing area. Um, so that's where the 4994 and the 5000 come from. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, we did read it backwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was printed in the back versus the front. Mm -hmm. Well, they're both open. I yeah. think it's fine as long as you both are right right now. So yeah. I think yeah. it's okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. Open. All right. I, think I would do what she said, what, what Allison suggested, maybe address the first part um, because you're going to have to close both hearings or handle both hearings separately since they're published separate. Okay. 
Yeah, so let's let's do the 4994 under the farmer brewery pouring permit first and make that clear that we're doing that first. Okay. Um do you so go ahead. Okay. Um so that um, presentation. Yeah. So uh Chris was kind enough to provide you with notes based off mm -hmm. of a meeting that we had with the public safety teams and other town officials just to make sure what we're doing is going to be the best fit for us and the best fit for you in the town. I believe the the strongest recommendation from you all is that we work with the public safety team, police and fire and EMS to address our emergency action plan and our event plan and make sure that that is consistently trained throughout the summer. So that way we're all on the same page. I believe actually Dan and I have a meeting on deck for early January to get that process started with both the police and fire and then We'll continue to revamp that as we learn more. Uh, don't forget EMS because we're all, we have, our EMS is separate. So yes. it's police, fire, and EMS. Um, a lot of times fire and EMS are the same agency that's not uh, here in Deerfield. We are a separate, have a separate <laughs> municipal EMS. Um, uh, Trevor or Tim, do you have any questions to start off with? Do you have a full presentation you want to go through or do you? We can go through. It's the pictures. I wanted to just give you guys a visual representation of what some of the larger scale events looked like over the course of 2023. So if you'd like to go to the next slide, Chris, this is just a visual for you. I wanted to have it because of this, these notes in case you wanted to know the layout of where certain things were. Mm -hmm. um, so Greenfield Ro Road is to the left of the screen and then the additional curb cut is to the top right if that helps just wanted to have that in case you needed it um and if you go along to the next slide we have some very happy marathon winners <laughs> so they are the top three men's and women's division winners from this year's half marathon and we can go on to the next one and this is us utilizing that summer stage for letting them know that they won and, and getting everybody the chance to recognize the top three women's winners. Next slide, please. This is actually during the half marathon, so or post half marathon, this is the summer stage area, the back patio. I was actually shocked to see how open it felt. So I wanted to share that visual with you as well. Um, the number of people involved in the half marathon versus some of the concerts? Was about double. Double. So the 3,000 was so a half marathon. the half marathon was your biggest event Absolutely. this past year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was a total of how much do you think? For total people? Yeah. Uh, just under 3,000 given, you know, some okay. people trained and didn't run and things like that. Okay. That, that includes staff? That includes staff. Okay. And um, so your other, even though the concerts through the summer seem to be um, extremely popular, that was only about 1,500 then? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you had any uh, slides again addressing the parking. Do you maybe you could just go over the how you handle the parking? Sure. Today? If Maryland. we want to go back to that map. So uh, as you know, we uh, are very limited by on-site parking, but within the tourism overlay district in the Todd we have the ability to get offsite parking. Um, and so we would like to utilize buses and shuttles with certain offsite parking with local businesses in the area. We will work with them to reestablish co um, contracts for this year, find new closer parking as much as we can. Obviously we learned from the half marathon that more parking is you know, imperative. So we're going to make sure that we have um, the correct plans in place with fire, EMS, police to make sure that that is a seamless process. Um, and that is where I mentioned that curb cut to that north. Mm -hmm. um, obviously it will take some work, but we'll work with the police and mass DOT to see what we can do about utilizing that area for egress. Oh, not just emergency egress, regular. Exactly. Egress. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I know this has been an extremely wet year, tremendously wet year, problematic. Um, so you probably couldn't use your 
uh, the grass area north because that's too wet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people sank in on the uh, yeah. half marathon. Yeah, so wet. on um, a dry year um, that has potential, would you have an access point on the north end or is it just going to be the south end? So the um, the that is north of the soccer field there or north of the parking lot. So mm -hmm. to the right of the screen is yep. the north end. And that is, if it's dry, absolutely. We'd love to use it. Um, hopefully we don't get a rainy summer like we did last year. But I, I don't remember, I'm just trying to think, I don't remember ever having a, even an emergency access off of that. Would you, when you're working, I, I think it would be really uh, a great idea to um, have when you're approaching Mass DOT for emergency access. Absolutely. A, have, add one for the north end as well even though you can yeah. you potentially can't use it because it's too wet. Mm -hmm. Now, Carolyn, if I'm correct, the right of the screen is north, right? Yes. Yeah. As we're facing it. Yes. yes. So and the you're left looking, of the screen is where EMS is. You're looking for access that would connect to the parking lot. You're looking north? for access to connect the parking lot to Route 5. Right. 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 So mm -hmm. you're you're looking to have an access point north of the existing if, access if point. Yes. Potentially if you had an incident in my mm -hmm. mind, having only one access is problematic. Mm -hmm. So having them approach Mass DOT for the exit that previously existed years ago mm -hmm. um, to the south makes total sense to have a second egress. But as long as you're going to Mass DOT and going through all the hassle of working with them, I would try to do the north end as well. Carolyn, I think you have it reversed. Yeah, the north end is that way. The north end is that way. And the south end is to your left. So but they're only, oh they're yes, looking, well, I meant yes. They're looking for an access point from the north. Is that correct? Correct. Right. right. I want I want it from the north Thank where you, the Trevor. soccer <laughs> where the soccer field behind. Yeah. If they use the soccer field in the future, you're talking another one. There, yeah, the yes. screen doesn't show it. Carolyn. Uh, it doesn't even yeah. show it. And this one down here is the south one that is mm -hmm. pre-existing years ago I there was one there okay yeah, there I, was I was not aware one. of that okay. yes there was one there and um years ago uh because channing beat used to use it huh. it was prior to us building the ems building and their donation of land and all that yeah yeah so there is one already on the south end and if you if you i would if you're making the effort to approach i would still try to do it from the north end just yeah, absolutely. Because well, we're, yeah. at some point, maybe it's dry year like we had in 22. It mm -hmm. was extremely dry drought year. You you could have potentially used that at parking lot as a parking lot, but also just as an emergency egress. Because for the amount of people, you know, and if you had an incident, it's better to have absolutely three, three accesses yeah in my mind in my and that's that's it. we plan to work with ems to make sure you know the instructions are very clear as to how many points of access they'll have how that process is going to work mm -hmm. we'll retrain our staff um, in accordance with all those laws but um definitely we will work with the the police team seems to have the um most knowledge about how how we need to approach dot on all this so we'll work with them and and see what we can make happen yeah. I mean, as long as you're going through the effort, it won't hurt. Absolutely. See if you could get and and just say it's an emergency. It's not mm -hmm. as everyday use. So. So okay. I'm not exactly sure what's just been communicated. So excuse me for being a little dense. Um, can one of you go up and point where you want the north access? It's not on the screen. That's the problem. No, they're getting an access right here. So. Again, we'll have to work with DOT and even see what is possible. Right. But the proposal from police, EMS, fire was that this would be the main entrance. Yep. And then you would have a secondary. Oop. This is touching. Yes. yes. Oh, sorry. Good. <laughs> and you would have a secondary exit this way where that curb cut is. So yes. You right. But yep. this would be gated and only an exit for events. Public. Big events. Yep. yep. And then for Right. So and then what I think I heard Carolyn say was that in the past, south of the building towards South Deerfield, there was previously an egress entrance. Right. And it's no longer in use. Yeah, there's no longer in right. no use. So we're not even really talking about that tonight, right? No. Okay. And um, 
I just think if they're making the effort that trying to get three accesses is, you know, having three accesses it makes total sense. Yeah, I just don't remember the topography of the land down there, and I think it gets wet. Yes, I mean, it's wet. it all gets wet. Yeah, so <laughs> especially this year. Your field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome to everywhere this summer. Right. Um, but yeah, so to not go too far down a rabbit hole that we don't know what is possible yet, we'll right. we'll definitely work with DOT and public safety to to do whatever we can to make that the most seamless parking and safe egress for everyone as possible. Um, and you know, we'll we'll continue to work on that. Chris, if you'd like to um, keep going through the slides, I just want to give you, you know, the full visual since I spent some time on it. Mm -hmm. um, so this is our tap room during the half marathon again. So I just wanted to give you again a full picture of what Max everything Max. was looking like yeah. during the biggest event because realistically, there's so much breathing room. Right. Yeah. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. And there were people outside as well. People outside as well. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. This is a nice, oh, I don't know who took this, but this is a lovely far away shot from a uh, Jeff Tweedy concert, I believe. So that was one of our, our bigger shows over the past summer. And uh, and what was the attendance number for that? About 1,500, did you say? I would guess, yeah. Okay. So with that being said, right, 1,500 people there, you go up to 5,000, where is everybody gonna be? That we are working on, we're coming up with, you know, the sound study, we're reassessing that, making sure all the sound is the most optimal for our neighbors and also that the, the setup is right. That is uh, Dan's job and we're, you know, we're working on all of that as we speak. Yeah, I'll jump in here to say what you're looking at, like picnic show people that brought blankets and yeah. playing Frisbee and hacky sack simply because there's space. There's all the space you could have, but this can more than accommodate. I mean, it's you guys have been out there. It mm -hmm. is a very yeah, large, big expansive area. garden. Um, and then, you know, depending on the show, like Dan's putting together um, a, a really exciting, diverse lineup for the summer. I wish we could talk about it. We have MDAs. <laughs> We're not allowed to Understood. announce anything until the bands do. Yeah. Um, but it's really important to us that they're in keeping with our brand. Mm -hmm. And as demonstrated previously, you know, these are the kind of shows that that fit with Treehouse. And I think we've established kind of who we are in the community yeah. thus far. Yep. Okay. And more seated, probably more structured seating, right? To get fit. I think actually probably more standing. No. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And chairs. People bring yeah, yeah. chairs. I mean, all of us have been to yeah, yeah. outdoor shows. Yeah. So. Um, really whatever okay. you're comfortable with yeah, like mm -hmm. standing sure kind of later in the in, yep. in the show there but um people have room to spread out or if you like to be a fan that's right up near yeah the stage, um, you have that option as well okay thank you sorry i just got a text message that the slides weren't displaying to people on zoom so we're just going to go through them real quick thank you and i would just love to make a note about um the folks that are uh, the winners in uh, the the six of them, uh, three of them are going to the Olympic trials next month. Oh wow! Um, oh, so we were awesome. really excited to have been a draw to, I, I they're yeah. called, like the elites people sure. that get to actually have a dream to go um, to the Olympics. So we were pretty excited that you know being part of the fall race circuit. I mean, everyone the feedback we got was are over the moon to come here. Like it's that's classic great. New England, great time here. Yeah, I just I wanted to pass it on to. It's a beautiful weekend. We're proud of that picture. Yeah, they all seem to really enjoy that hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so fingers Hopefully, crossed, they're going. Good. They're going to make the Olympic team. Nice. Hopefully, it won't wash out. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um. All right, do you, Trevor or Tim, do you have any more questions on this? On the slideshow or yeah, on, just in I, general. So you're, I'm I'm curious. Um, you're going to be taking a step that's going to essentially triple the current capacity, and um, you have re agreements in place. You're not looking to expand the parking on your site at, at this point. Is that correct? Not at not this. Point. Yeah, and uh, because it is relatively wet area and not um, guaranteed yeah so um something 
So you've made arrangements then with, again, like Yankee Candle. I, I know you use their, their lots. And uh, I think that's, you know, my concern is that we have been hearing anecdotally that um, sound travels. And can you explain where the decibel levels on your property are when you have a, a concert? Certainly. So we have a sound study and I actually, I don't know if I have the Wi-Fi here, I could pull it up. Um, but we have a sound study where we had sound engineers come out and basically work with different projections of sound to find the optimal location for our summer stage. Um, so it, it sort of projects at a, if you want to go to the, the map, actually, Chris, I don't know if it'll be a good visual, um, but essentially at the property line throughout the decibels never exceeded, I want to say like 80, maybe 85, which is um, from what I gather in a valley, while it may be 85 at our property, the wind, uh, I think, takes the sound of the train quite far mm -hmm. to other towns. So I, I don't have a study on how far or how amplified the sound can get the further it goes. But for separate readings throughout the property at different points along the property line, we've measured at well within a, a standard range. So I'll note that um, you may have already studied on the series and while we are looking to expand the number of people that get to um, <laughs> Anybody who's online, can you please mute yourself unless you're going to ask a question? Thank you. That doesn't mean that it, we're expanding in terms of the decibels or getting louder, like it's going to be bigger. Right. Same like that. It's, yeah. the, it's the same sound. There's no expansion. Um, and from their tech perspective, that, that will not mean. Same sounds. The larger event occupancy allows us the flexibility to draw in some different names mm -hmm. right. to see what, uh, you know, if we can get bigger acts to come to Deerfield to drive people to Deerfield for tourism. Right. Can you clarify what the source decibel level is? Um, can, you, um, can you please identify yourself? Um, and we're not taking questions yes. yet, but we will, we will hang on one sec. We will ask questions shortly. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll take down the slideshow and ask yeah. if the audience has questions. <clears throat> so I just wanted to go over the comments um, just for the public and others might want to hear um, after the meeting. The, um, these are requirements from the of the Deerfield Police were um, requesting second driveway to Greenfield Road, which we all just talked about, um, traffic to enter from the south and exit uh, through the north. Uh, identify off-site parking to accommodate the larger number of numbers of attendees and provide an MOU. This will allow um, public safety concerns to be uh, planned for advanced uh, or, or in advance uh, specific locations and parking areas. Sign boards and enhanced temporary lighting on Greenfield Road. Um, it is it can be dangerous with a lot of traffic and there's not you know there's not street lights out there yeah. so. Um, that was one one item. Uh, walkway improvement to connect uh, Treehouse Brewing Company with um, sidewalk at 84 Greenfield Road. Um, updated um, EAP event plan uh, to be approved by the police, uh, fire, and EMS and reviewed annually, which you would do with a, a larger group. Um, Continue with police coverage for events using the same parameters as last year, just based on the number of ticket sales and event size. Uh, provide joint training with the uh, Treehouse Brewing Company staff, um, police, fire, and, and South County EMS. And then South Deerfield Fire um, Department requirements uh, built here tonight too. Um, life safety evaluation as required um, under NFTA standards, updated same updated uh, EAP event plan um, to address concerns from last year, uh, enhanced lighting and exit exiting plan to accommodate the larger crowds, uh, tour bus placement and access um, enhancement enforcement on parking to better allow emergency access along east side of complex to, to be addressed in the EAP event plan. Notification to the fire department of any event on the property that exceeds the permitting occupancy of the of the building, um, 
events that, that exceed occupancy are subject to fire watch as determined by the fire chief, compliance with all laws and codes as applicable, SCEMS requirements at same update of the EAP plan, and to incorporate EMS response and staffing dependent on the event size, um, designated response areas, uh, uh, response, uh, response locations for the ambulance access, um, and then Board of Health requirements would update and expand the number of bathrooms to accommodate the larger crowds, coordinate um, inspections in advance of food, trucks, et cetera, um, incorporate Board of Health requirements into the uh, EAP event plan, and the building inspector requirements were updated occupancy numbers by the architect. Um, I mean, I think the strongest request was the EAP event plan be a living document annually. Uh, yeah, I think that's what we, I mean, in my mind, that's mm -hmm. most important is that we review the emergency action plan every year um, prior to renewal. Um, and it's only because it, it has nothing to do with size. It's just that, unfortunately, in the, we live in a world where awful things happen and we want to make sure that we're always on top of that as much as we can. Yeah. Um, and I met today with Chris and Valerie Bird, our health agent, and Pat, who processes our um, food permits. And we were trying to figure out a way that we could streamline the food trucks because it's the biggest, um, you know, um, I, you know, Valerie comes down Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and she, you know, does the food inspections and stuff like that. So what we were trying to do is figure out with this kind of increase, there would be obviously more food trucks. So we were thinking of, um, we would still do our annual, this is not solid because we, we couldn't figure out how to make it work for everybody across town. But um, we were thinking of making you like Worcester has a food truck zone, friendly zone. And so what would happen is you we would, do the inspections, annual inspections, pre-inspections that would make sure that all the food trucks are have all the equipment and everything is operational. Then Valerie would come down um, and do the food inspections every week whenever you have food trucks. And we would bill you based on um, like a flat rate, like say 15 a month. And then she would, when she's doing the food inspections, you know, all the week long, if there's additional food trucks beyond the 15, we would just bill you the 15 and you all would figure out how um, to handle the, you know, if you wanted to charge the food trucks, the 50 bucks, because we're, we're going to go from 35 to 50 because we're not quite covering our costs for the food inspections. So um, we're going to increase it to 50 and then you, and we would charge you 15 um, a month. And then if there's additional ones, Valerie would just, during her inspection, she would pick up the additional ones and we would just bill you. And that would be up to you to handle the paperwork with your, whether you want to charge back the $50 or whatever. Once we've done the pre-inspection, we would not then handle any more paperwork beyond, because what it is, it's the owner, what's becoming onerous is trying to issue a permit for each different food truck for each different during the week. Okay. And so it's, you know, it's just a lot of, costs us a lot. So if we eliminate the paperwork, the food vendors I think would be very happy. And, you know, overall it's not that much additional cost to you and however you want to handle it. But for us, it would streamline it a bit. And Valerie would have the records of who is actually there Valerie, do you want to just to go over it a little bit? It's probably not part of the hearing, though. It's not part of the hearing. Yeah, let's do okay. that later, though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. We'll, we can, we'll we can meet on out. that when, right. when in the process is established, but it yep. is, you know, we will, in the event action plan, just to make sure the food trucks are inspected per whatever guidelines right. you provide us. Great. Right. And, and I know we've gone running around about the porta potties and I'm I'm fine if you want to go one more year. We gotta we gotta see. Yeah, we'll make them beautiful for you, but we gotta <laughs> we gotta see how yeah. it works. Right. Okay. okay. I do, my big thing is just statistically, you just don't people just don't wash their hands as much 
when they have a porta potty versus a, a regular bathroom. So it is really public health that we're concerned about here. Absolutely. So, um, but I'll back off for one more year. Thank you. Do you want to open up to public yeah. comment? If I anybody else, also, do you have do any, you have any other comments Tim? before you hear? Are you all set? Mm, okay, for now. For okay. Now. All right. So we'll op open up for public comment. Um, uh, just please, each person, um, we would just request that you um, speak um, clearly. Uh, you state your name and address. Um, and uh, anybody that is in person will come up to the mic so that people on Zoom can hear. And we will accept written comments, but only if people you know, sign them. And we would like to limit it to two minutes, but um, if it's a real concern, we don't mind. Okay? So is there, so we heard someone, Michael, your hand is raised. Michael Begay, your hand is raised. Oh, no, that's that's my cursor, actually. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I believe it was Matt who oh, spoke Oh, Matt, there. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, Matt Tuttle from Waitley Road here in Deerfield. Um, Matt, can you just say your name clearly? I didn't quite catch the last name. <laughs> Uh, last name is Tuttle. Okay, um, Tuttle. okay. Thank you. My question uh, <clears throat> is related to the initial application, which I believe said that the uh, concerts would generate 90 decibels of uh, at the source. And if they're getting 80 to 85 decibels, 700 to 500 feet away, that would put that um, concert quite a bit above what the initial authorization was or the initial special permit. Um, anecdotally at my residence, it's louder than the highway that I live by. So I'm wondering what Treehouse is going to do to uh, mitigate the impact on their neighbors. Uh, additionally, uh, we've also lost access for one of the events to our roads. And with this increased occupancy, what will that look like? Will the town restrict uh, access to residents driving? on the roads during a 5,000 person marathon or bike race, or how's that gonna work? Well, I believe the parking is gonna be offsite, uh, similar, and Yankee Candle has over a million visitors a year. So um, that's not really- um, Well, I was referring to the event where we couldn't drive on the roads because there was the marathon. So I'm wondering how, how are we going to balance the taxpayers' access to the roads with the treehouse usage in I those think events that was where. For the half marathon. Right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. I, can, I can speak to that. One, yeah. one day a okay. year, one Sunday a year. Um, so we have worked with, again, the public safety team, police, fire, and EMS to ensure that we are giving for that half marathon again. There are runners on the road. We want everybody to be safe. We want Deerfield residents to be able to run. I understand that it can be an inconvenience when you can't access certain roads. So we have worked with the public safety team as well as our marathon organizers to make sure that that uh, disturbance, so to speak, is as limited as possible, as short of a time as possible. And we will continue to revamp that now that we've learned how the previous half marathon went. Um, I, I want you to address the decibel thing. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I think Matt has uh, concerns is like, when there are events at the fairgrounds, uh, music events like the Green River event was this year at the fairgrounds. Um, it's it's louder at my house than it is actually at Wisdom Way. So um, could you just address the decibel uh, readings? Because I know you have taken those read readings. Yes. So to um, I'm, I'm not sure, Matt, I, I'm sure you're more well versed in it than I am, but I have watched personally the soundboard. I've had our previous event manager take pictures of it and the readings were always at 90 or under from that soundboard close to the venue. Um, so again, sound can travel in mysterious ways. And so I'm sure that that's why it's louder by your house and also by certain part, parts near the road, just the way that the sound is carrying. Um, but I have made sure that we are not exceeding any sort of sound that would not be accept acceptable to our neighbors. We want to be good neighbors. That being said, I do want to address the um, initial statement that Matt made, um, which was that in our initial application for the concerts, that was 
prior to us being zoned in the Todd. Mm -hmm. So it is not necessarily the same standards Correct. at this point, but we are doing our best to maintain those standards, and if not lower. And as Ellie mentioned throughout, um, you know, the 10 days of a year that we did have this summer stage, we continuously monitored to make sure we were in compliance. So the road closures are, you wouldn't foresee road closures for a 5,000 person at concert, but you would, obviously it's one time of the year that you would do the, the I mean, we, we close some of the roads in town when we do the, the veteran run and some other, other runs like that, where we have, you know, in the morning hours that some, some areas for safety are closed down, but it's not a, you're not planning multiple runs no. all year. It will be once a year, well planned ahead. Exactly. Okay. Plenty of notice. I believe we had the road signs up for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, I think one thing I maybe mentioned it once before. There was, um, I think next time, wherever you might have water stations or anything like that, just touch base with the owners that make sure it's okay. Like, hey, just so they may know that somebody's going to be out front absolutely. giving water out, that kind of thing. Yeah, we'd, we'd yeah, be we'd happy to learn. do that, and we've taken um, feedback from, yeah. um, you know, all the wonderful safety Perfect. folks that work with us on this. And I, it's also worth mentioning, and I know you all are, are aware of this, but um, we went to the best right right off the gate. We we have BMSE. They run the Boston yeah. Marathon, a Beach to Beacon, uh, Falmouth Road Race. We, we really, it was very important to us to be good members of this community, and that is why we sought out the absolute highest level of race organizers. Yeah. It was a good, it was a good run. It was. Uh, it was actually very limited complaints. So I think I thought it was well run too. Mm -hmm. um, and thankfully it was sunny. <laughs> yes, yeah. the one day of the year. <laughs> any other comments from people? Yeah. Is there any other comment? Matt, did you have any more comments? Sorry, that's been addressed for okay. me. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, okay, did, was there... And yes. Com oh, comment in the room. Come on, on. Yeah. Yep. You have to. <laughs> there's a there's a mic. And just state your name and where you live. Mm -hmm. I and I wish there was a way for some of us to be able to address issues with you. Um, because everything isn't necessarily both. I know with the uh, marathon, because the arteries were closed, um, a friend of mine was um, eating to get her dog. And she was not allowed to get food. Which was normally that we were. So maybe just once a year, but I think we need to be a little more thoughtful about public access to certain areas. I think what we can do is address any access to the veterinary hospital for that kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, that was the first time I've heard about that. Mm -hmm. So I am really sorry to your friend, but, um, you know, that's an awful thing, but honestly, the police, um, will make a comment right now. We'll make a note of that. Mm -hmm. The police will, um, have access to the veterinary hospital for, um, any kind of emergency like that. Cause that that's horrible. And that is something that we should have addressed. Yes. Prior to that, I mean, the police, we should have, we'll put that in the, we'll put that in actually in the plan. Okay, we'll figure out something. And can there be sound barriers in small farm near treehouse property to help contain some of the sound? You know, um, like I said, I've, I've lived 43 years in my house and we've had music events and the fair every year. Um, and the noise level at my house is tremendously more than lower down on Wisdom Way, and it's because I'm on the hill. And, um, you know, I had thought about that when we have had sound complaints over the years as Board of Health. And um, surprisingly, there's not really any way 
to have effective sound barriers for the distances that you're talking about on Waitley Road or my house to the fairgrounds kind of thing. Um, it, it, it's, it's on the level that sound barriers work, um, but not when it goes up and over as a, in a valley situation. I, I, we've tried to deal with it over the years. So I, you know, asking Treehouse to put up sound barriers, I think would be um, not effective from based on my experience over the years from Board of Health with sound complaints and my own personal situation. Um, of what? Bringing in 5,000 it's you're mentioning a maybe candle, but that's about a year. We're talking about an event where there can be five thousand people plus mm -hmm. um, in a concentrated time, yeah. Right. Which makes a difference. Right, over a period of a day. Some of the I I bet we've pretty much if you look at Yankee Candle, uh Bill Swayze is here, but um or he was. Yeah, he's oh, there. He's there. Oh, sorry. In the back. I, you move seats. Um, I, if you, if to get the million visitors, there are days when there are five thousand visitors at Yankee Candle. So, um, right, right. Yeah, it'd there, be more condensed course, at, for a concert day. for sure. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I. That's you know, the request. Yeah. Like, you need the space to draw the accounts that you want to have the the 5000 affords us the flexibility to draw talent again for the half marathon to get a few more runners out on the road to allow you know the town to get a few more visitors so that gives us the flexibility that we need i guess i also think about and i believe me i like the idea of bringing people together, I like music, but then there's other considerations too. Mm -hmm. So we have three houses there to sell alcohol. So we have 5,000 people that are drinking. Are there concerns about that? Actually, uh, no. I have to say, um, from personal experience, visiting multiple times on site. Um, in my uh, capacity as a board of health, um, and also a couple of times as you know, bringing my family there, they are wonderfully strict, and um, I have heard of no it compliance limits. issues, limits. and yeah. and they are very strict with age age. Um, there's been no violations whatsoever. Um, I it is family friendly in what they're trying to do, and. Um, I would say they have an outstanding record based on our regulations. Do you want to speak to the limit of how many? You, know, you can't just go there and drink all day, right? Oh, no, no, no. It's <laughs> just so people understand, you yeah. know, it's a you brewery, can... it's, they sell beer. That, that can is go there correct. and drink all day. I mean, with, at the risk of repeating yeah. um, what you said, we're incredibly family friendly place. We're incredibly uh, proud of our record. Uh, every single employee, including the folks up here, are trained in responsible alcohol service. Um, we, we just have the most stellar record that, that you are going to find there. And um, that's not something that we would ever jeopardize for ourselves or for our neighbors. Yeah, you have you have to you buy, you prepay, the, and there's a limit to you can buy ahead of time. And um, it's I have to say it's there's well. even a size limit. So a, a beer with less alcohol in it is slightly larger, but not dramatically larger. Um, and the the more alcohol heavy um, beers that are sold are in smaller quantities. And you can only buy three in an evening. Is that correct? Yep. And so prepay for them. And but yes, we certainly understand the concern, um, and that's why I'm I'm actually. Uh, you know, interested in discovering, you know. I think 5, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's sure. 41 acres of land there. 
So it's uh, yeah, it's quite a large well, venue. Five thousand is the town, the size of the town. Of exactly, it's so. it's the size of our community. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. For yes. Your thank comments. you for thank you for coming in. I appreciate that, and thank you for sharing about your friend. I'm really sorry about that, but we're we're going to rectify that for sure. Um, any other comments? I think there's a gentleman. Um, Robert, oh, stand up. IPad. Robert's iPad. We're not sure. That is my self, Robert J. Decker the third, in a butter at one ninety eight North Main Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Resident of eleven Kelleher Drive, South Deerfield, Mass. I think it's premature to increase the capacity to five thousand or six less than five thousand. Uh, I think there might be some place in between it should settle on until you find out how well this is going. The other thing is closing off the streets and what have you uh, should not happen. Uh, if you want to turn around and make one of them one way for a day or for during the marathon, that's fine. But people should have access to their properties. So, and that's, you know, what I'm saying. And listen, but I think you've already made your minds up before you got there. Thank you very much. Thanks for your confidence, Bob. Bob, Appreciate thank that. you. Uh, we do close down the road, so for like the veterans race and stuff like that. Yeah. But whatever. Uh, was there you anything else? Okay. Um, anyway, questions? Bill, Bill, would you like to say anything? Uh, Bill Swayze, I'm the South Deerfield Fire Chief. Um, we're at the treehouse all year long. They've taken any of our questions, comments, concerns. They've really worked with us. Uh, there was a group of people that met with them, come up with all the comments. Um, you yep. know, I think, you know, we spent some time on this, you know, all the public safety agencies, uh, Captain Kurt Seaman in our fire prevention group. So, you know, we're confident in the, the board's ability to make a decision. Thank you. So, Bill, do you feel um, pretty? Com I, I guess I want everyone to feel comfortable with the working with the emergency team. Do you feel like it was been a good process? Do you have any there's suggestions? The events, uh, there's a a pre event meeting, safety meeting that happens before every one of the concerts. Um, you know, and it goes down to active shooters. It goes down to weather. It goes down. I uh, worked at uh, one of the events where we did have uh, lightning within 10 miles. Uh, they do get notified. Mm -hmm. uh, we brought all the people inside during that event. They're, you know, very orderly, no issues there. Mm -hmm. um, brought everybody back outside, you know, started the music up again. Another lightning strike within the 10 miles. We brought everybody back inside. So, you know, do I have some concerns about talking with people? Yeah, I mean, but they're going to be addressed in the emergency action plan. You know, and I think right. that's that working document is very important, you know, in order to make a decision as to, you know, if there was inclement weather, what are we going to do with all those people? You, know, you can only park 400 or 300 on site. Right. You know, how do you move all those other people to safety? I think that's, you know, working with the architects, trying to improve the, um, the occupancy limit of the building, you know, they're only using a fraction of the building right now. There's other areas that could be used as areas of refuge. Yep. So, you know, that's this document, the emergency action plan is, is very important to us. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I want to express my, um, uh, how pleased I am that your commitment to Treehouse's commitment to the emergency action plan, because it is really important. This is a huge you have a huge venue and we want to encourage that kind of thing. Obviously pays our taxes, but we really want to make sure that everyone is safe. And um, you have had a good commitment to it as Bill has spoken to from my, my concerns have all been addressed um, right away. Uh, I know we're working on the porta potties, but you know, it's that kind of stuff that, you know, give and take and, um, working together that we really appreciate. So, um, I'm. There's also a gentleman, uh, oh. Mr. Borenstein. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, great to be with you all this evening. Thank you for the time. Uh, I just want to. Mark, uh, Mark, you need to introduce yourself as the. Oh, as sorry. Trio. Mark Borenstein. I'm an attorney at the law firm of Bowditch and Dewey in Worcester, attorney for Trias Brewing Company, Inc. Uh, just, uh, 
Ali and Sarah have done a great job in terms of the presentation, so I don't have much to add with respect to the presentation itself, but just by way of clarification, uh, some of those uh, comments were read. I'm just curious if those are going to be incorporated into the license decision. If so, I think we need some clarifications on some of those comments, mm -hmm. such as I think Ali mentioned that Mass COT would have to approve of um, any new uh, curb cuts, uh, any signage along Route 5, I think would also require uh, Mass COT approval. Uh, I think there wants to be some coordination with respect to any of the improvements, such as the sidewalk. So uh, I'm just, I don't want to jump the gun here, but in terms of those requirements, are those just discussion points? Are those being incorporated into the decision? I just want to make sure I understand and on behalf of Treehouse. From from uh, just my point of view as one member here, um, I would, you know, I'm, I'm not interested in voting on this tonight. I would take this under advisement and work some of this language out between your attorneys and and um, and the fire agency, police agencies and um, South County EMS, just to make sure that, and, and obviously we have a, have a conversation with DOT, I think it's really important for that, that access. So I think um, we wouldn't spend a lot of time because I know you need to book fans and line stuff up and it takes time to do all that stuff. So this wouldn't be hanging on very long, but I think I'd wanna go through these things and answer those questions for, for, for Mark. Certainly, I appreciate that, Mark. Um, we were hoping there was going to be a vote um, this evening, which I, I think you've had mm -hmm. multiple meetings with um, all, all of the parties involved and came together with this letter of uh, recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's certainly ongoing communication between you. So I well, if you'd want this factored into a decision tonight, I mean, that's be difficult to do since it I was, just read this tonight. It was my understanding that this was to act as a guideline with the emergency action plan being sort of that gate kept document that would include the elements. So this wouldn't necessarily be the vote. This would be the I guess the emergency action plan would be the vote and we would take into consideration everything that different town officials need for us to be a safe event venue. Which would be an ongoing conversation. Right. Um, and we're working with every recommendation uh, from police, fire, and safety in terms of um, communications with the mass. <coughs> um, but it was not our intent that um, that would be a requirement from an answer from the DOT uh, this evening. Oh, yeah. And then it's yeah, going to do everything we can with the mass DOT, but waiting, waiting on that. Uh, right, right. DOT, Mass DOT will not respond that quickly. Mm -mm. Uh, I understand that. Go ahead, Casey. My, I guess to Mark's point, um, are you considering or would you consider putting conditions on the liquor license? I think I'm hearing that there are some things you want to see in place, like an EAP, emergency action plan. Right. That's an a living document. Correct. Um, I would say I would want an updated one because mm -hmm. there already exists one. Yeah. So we want an updated one to reflect the new numbers. That's fairly, fairly simple to put in as a condition. We yes. Have it, it, and it's yeah. revised it, annually. Mm -hmm. If I may, um, I think we could probably work through if, to the extent that the select board is willing to vote on this matter this evening. I know that Treehouse has quite a few um, acts that they would like to get under agreement and move forward with. And obviously a big component of that is ensuring that they're gonna be able to accommodate crowds up to 5,000. So I think to Sarah and, and, and Ali's point, uh, to the extent that the board is willing to vote with respect to the EAP event plan, and then perhaps we could remove some of these requirements and then work with the town on those items that might need a little bit more time to be fleshed out. And it, it ultimately could be um, it, in everyone's best interest to make sure that we're not putting forward these requirements that's something that's also not viable with respect to mass EOT or some other component of, of these requirements. Bill, you had a comment? Yeah, I mean, from a fire department perspective, ours are not negotiable. Right. I mean, well, that's, know, that's public safety, you know, I mean, I would I would love to see a plan in place before it will take place because I agree. You know, if they don't have you know enough space to put five thousand people, what are they going to do with those people? Thirty people at a time on a bus to go someplace else may not work. Right. Because the event gets canceled during the inclement weather. So you know, without this working document finalized, 
Yeah. No. That, that, that's, I don't feel comfortable. that's my biggest concern is like, you know, to, to take a vote on something at the end of a hearing uh, without having the document vetted. I know you'll say you'll do it all, and I, I know that's all your intention, but without having it done and know that it's going to work, I, I can't take the vote back and say, oh, I'm not going to, you know, now we're not going to let you have the have the uh, thing. My, my goal is to allow this to happen and want it to happen, but I want to make sure that all of that stuff is going to work. And I don't know that yet. So to the point that um, Bill just made about public safety concerns, I know the police department has public and safety, con safety concerns, and they would like to see something in writing that shows how things can be addressed. So as we're talking about a quote unquote living document, seeing what that looks like mm -hmm. after a meeting that we had with Treehouse to prior to your hearing so that we had concrete things to give you um i think it makes sense to take those considerations under advisement and have treehouse return with something that we can all review because frankly the three of you aren't out there handling the public safety issues that folks have made the time to come in and talk to you about mm -hmm. um so do you want to we could we could have a separate meeting so, on this um how quickly can we get it? Uh, how quickly can you get this IEP worked out with police and fire and, or e, excuse me, EAP. EAP. Too many acronyms. Um, how 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 soon will it take you to get that together so that we could call another meeting? So our our plan has always been that it would be a living, breathing document that we would alter as we learn from different events. That being said, I don't know if it's something that this could be a conditional approval and then it's finalized by sign off from the uh, police fire and um, EMS that we met. Just, the, my only concern is that we're, I guess, already three months behind and when people already start to book acts for the summer, mm -hmm. especially at higher than 1500. Um, so, you know, I, I'd love to meet with the town or with the town, but I know right now even certain members of the police department are on vacation. So I, it's it's just one of those things where you know I'm I'm happy to drive out here. I'm I would go write it tonight, mm -hmm. but um, you know yeah. getting the powers that be into a room together can take some time, and I would hate to delay the second you know vote. Um, Mark, you have your hand up still. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I think to Ali's point, to extent it's acceptable Mark, to this. Mark, can I interrupt for just a second? Since yeah. many people are here virtually, you know, can you just each time you speak? <laughs> sure. Sorry. So uh, Mark Borenstein, attorney for Treehouse. So I, I think to the extent that the select board is comfortable, we certainly could make the EAP plan a condition of approval that the EAP plan uh, will be submitted to the select board will be reviewed with the different emergency departments and will be deemed acceptable to all of those departments prior to the commencement of an event. And if Treehouse doesn't follow through with it, they can't commence their events. So I think we also don't wanna rush the EAP uh, plan to ensure that everyone's concerns are addressed, that we understand you know, where traffic is coming from. It, it, it doesn't behoove the town or treehouse to put forward a plan as quickly as possible so that we have a plan. And then ultimately, you know, over time, it needs to be re 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 uh, re uh, revised or updated. I think it should be revised and updated as events progress, especially because these are larger events. But I think we certainly could have another hearing with respect to the EAP plans after extensive meetings with the different departments, and it could be approved by the select board. Well, as long as um, I mean, I guess I, I'd be fine with a conditional vote as long as no event would take place unless fire police EMS have signed off on the event plan and they feel it can work. Um, it may allow you to get have some risk in booking mm -hmm. events, but um, it, it would, you know, I, that would be really the only compromise because until until the chiefs can look it over and say, yeah, we're good with this and we'll sign off on it you know, it can't really be approved. So, right. and I think there's a lot of back and forth too. That there will need to, to be, so. yeah, there will need to be for sure. 
And as you learn after another year of doing this, you may revise it again. So, oh no, I or I one expect, concert. I, yeah. I would expect it to be advised, revised constantly. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. yes. We have the Victor Boreas uh, Eastern Avenue. Just what is the frequency of this? And uh, as sitting here, I haven't been told what the frequency is. Is this five thousand? several times a month is it one event uh that seems to be a big part i worked at killington for a number of years and we had ten thousand people coming in uh, on weekends and going out at, at, at different uh, it's just this that would to me it would yes it's a learning it's a pro in progress but uh how many how many, many events did event. you have how many events did you have this past year so well, yeah ten. I think it was about 10 this past year, um, you know, our I, I think it was, yeah, it, had, it was less than a dozen, I think, because yeah. we were talking not, 12, but we didn't actually do that. That's anything. not counting the the uh, 200 seat space. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, really highly curated uh, events, and we call it the summer stage theater series. Right. Because of the that's the so, right. so it's that's like once a week or I'm planning on... It depends. So sometimes. much of it depends on you know the the draw the and our capability and, and their as schedule. I said, yeah. highly curated series. So we're not just filling the place up to. to fill so up we're talking. So probably uh, around a dozen or so throughout the summer. Yeah, in your business. I would need to give you a specific. I know, but in, I, I, in case of, it's different. I mean, people, yeah. people in. It's not a constant thing. No, oh, it's not. It, yeah, you know, yeah once a week I, I just want to make sure. <laughs> in my impression, it was not yeah. that often. Yeah. In your long range business plan, if you have such a plan, um, assuming that you increase the concert um, attendee level to the level you're looking for, is there is there a range of concerts a year you're hoping to to have outdoors? Um, we are hoping to bring the highest quality acts and the most desirable actor, which is why it's so important that we do get this increased uh, occupancy. So, um, because we, we won't be able to attract those acts. So, I am not an expert in the music business while uh, my colleague Dan is here, but I do know that it, it fluctuates. So, I, I would be right uh, to say, oh, we're going to have eight shows a year. Right, right. I mean, obviously. Some years, uh, the the acts that you want to attract are going to all be out on the road to, at the same time, and you're going to maybe do 15 or 20 shows, and another year you might not do that many. Correct. So I was just, uh, it's really what the market and and your demographic you're looking to to serve. Exactly. Yeah, but but I I will say, and in, um, in everything that Treehouse does, we're about having the highest quality touch points for our guests. It, it, it's not about quantity. It really is about having an outstanding experience for the limited number of people that get to, to share this with us. I know, but it people just wanted an idea, and I it really wasn't. I knew it wasn't that many this summer, and it, so as long as it's generally in that number ish, no plans for a dramatic increase of that. Okay, so we have. I know Matt's spoken a couple of times before, but he has raised his hand again. So, if Matt, you yeah. had your hand up. I do. Matt Tuttle, Whaley Road. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was. I. It was just the angle. I, yeah, the the, Kurt, the wallpaper is hiding your hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, no, no, okay. I just wanted to expand on that. I'd like to know, really, how many events that are going to be at the five thousand person occupancy? Because I'm personally not looking forward to commuting home from East Hampton with basically the population of the town getting off 91, potentially. I mean, that sounds like a traffic nightmare to me. So I'm wondering really how often is that going to be happening? If it's- Well, it's hard to 12 say. 12 to 15? Booked, yeah, it hasn't booked, yeah. I would say a dozen-ish, right? I, I, mean, I don't, do we, yeah, we don't care. Uh, yeah. I really, um, yeah. the answer is the same one that yeah. we just had there. I know it, it's hard to say, Matt, at this point. All right. Just want to express concern with that. History. Yeah. The, the problem is there's not much of a history and that's why they're um, allowing the, I'm allowing the pot, uh, porta potties another year or, or we had talked about only one year of porta potties. And the reason why is because they're trying to figure out a business model and they haven't really settled on that yet. 
um, because it depends on the size, you know, what sizes you can book with people, talent and all that kind of stuff. So they want to invest in permanent bathrooms at this point until they know what they're really going to try to end up doing. I have a, a hand raised for Tammy. Yeah, hi, uh, Tammy Gaylor. I own 7 and 11 Jackson Road off of North Main. So Matt, thank you very much because um, my concern is 12 to 15 events. So that's every every summer weekend. We have a beautiful backyard and pool. I love Treehouse. I love your guys' pizza and the venue. But there were a couple of your bigger shows that were so noisy that I had to go inside. I could not enjoy my backyard and my pool. And we pay a boatload of taxes to the town of Deerfield. So I'm just trying to figure out how that's going to work. Tripling, I, I mean, we feel like the venue is perfect. 1,500, I, I mean, tripling the number of people um, just seems mind boggling to me. And I'm assuming the treehouse takes care of the extra police and all of the other things that are needed. But road, you know, um, wear and tear, uh, I just is there a financial benefit to the town of Deerfield besides, yes. you know, having yes. a lot of extra people? Yes, there is. Okay. I forget what was the multiplier, 20, 26 million? Um, for the state. Um, so um, I, I think you're referring to our, our economic impact study that we um, had conducted by the Donahue Institute at the University of Massachusetts. We're really, really proud of those results. And mm. um, one of the things that that I always pick up on there is that for every $10 spent at a tree in the treehouse ecosystem, $8.50 go to other businesses and, and municipalities I know. in the state. So we're, we're pretty proud of that. Yep. Good. Um, okay. Tammy, did you have your a further question? Or she just forgot to put her hand on. Okay. Yeah, I it just and was kind of curious about who was notified about this meeting because the only letter we got was for number seven, Jackson Road. We didn't get one to our house, which is next door. Our neighbors did not get anything. I've and told a couple of people that are on the on the Zoom meeting now that live in town that didn't know about it. So you know, it's just kind of a pitiful amount of participants, but I, I don't think very many people were notified. It was based notified. on statutory, Tammy, it was based on statutory requirements. Okay. Just location? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was totally location. It was based on Mass General Law. Okay. And I believe we actually even... But, I mean, I want Treehouse yeah, to be they went beyond. they went beyond what was required. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Um. Okay. All right, um, I'll take a motion to close the hearing. So we can- Deliberate? Uh, okay. Yeah. No other comments? I, oh, we have, oh, yeah. I did have one more, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay. I was wondering if you could tell me what the direct impact, I know that the Treehouse put out an economic impact study. I'm wondering if you can tell me what the direct impact from these concerts to the tax payers, the town of Deerfield is. I know we get like what 0.75 percent. For... I actually have it in front of me. Oh, oh okay, great. go ahead. Give great. It. The the concerts itself, but Treehouse in general, I have in front of me. Okay, go ahead. Great. Um, so it was the 26 million number. Yes. I apologize. Um, and then the cumulative to the state was 63 million. Okay. Yep. Is the but just he's asking? I think yeah. What to the concert, municipal? What, oh. what financial benefit did the... we don't have that? Yeah. We, yeah. 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 That for you. Yeah, we don't have that broken down, Matt. I'm I'm really curious about that because if it's if it's just the 0.75 percent per uh, the meals tax, I mean, oh, I mean, I'm hoping it's more than that. I'm not sure what the yes. The, I mean, we can give you the details of the what the, how they base that. They came up with that number. Um, yeah, that'd be great. I did I did see the economic impact, David. It looks like they took in capital investments into the properties and things like that, which, you know, subcontractors mm -hmm. get paid for improvements. So I understand that. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. So I'll make a, what's the, yeah, we're yeah, going to well, no, make a motion. Has, I asked to see. I'm going to, I'm going to make a motion to close the first hearing. Can we can we close both hearings, Casey? Or do we have to do? Well, I think, I think we're going to do, do one at a time. Okay. No, 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 but I meant we can. 
close them. So I'll make a motion to close um, the Treehouse Brewing Company um, hearing for the uh, application of Men Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 19C, and Farmer Brewer permit, Pouring Permit to increase occupancy to 4,994 within the farmer brewery premises. That's on the back side, Tim. Give us a second. Right. And I'll second it. All right. Is there any further discussion? Not to close the hearing. Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor? Just to close the hearing. Okay. I'm going to deliberate. I just want to make sure so that we're sorry. Yeah, just no, to close the hearing. Just yeah, to not close. Deliberate. No, just to close the hearing so we All can right. deliberate. And uh, Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Um, can we close the second one and then? I think we can because I don't see a reason why we couldn't. Okay. But we'll act on the first one first. Um, so I'll make a motion to close the second hearing for Treehouse Brewing Company uh, for the application to further amend Mass General Law Chapter 138, Section 19C and Farmer Brewer Pouring pursuant to Mass General Law 138, Section 19H to increase the total occupancy to 5,000 for the service of malt beverages, wine, and distilled spirits throughout all licensed premises. So for purposes of discussion, I'm gonna second this, but I do have a question I'd like to, to raise. The applicants. When... Do you okay. want, do you want to second that, and then we can. Yeah, I, I seconded it for yep. the purpose okay. of discussion. All right. But I would like to ask. Okay, so let's say it's a non-concert night, and you, you know, the, from the hours of six to nine or six to eight, I don't forget when you stop selling. Um, is it? Yeah. So five thousand people show up. They can't. They they can't park in your premises and you don't have any arrangements for so what happens when when all these guests get turned away and um it would be highly highly unusual and has never happened that 5000 people descended upon um our lo our location on a wednesday this, this, this is kind of a softball question <laughs> i hope you at random yeah. yes so um i, I we hope for highly, that to happen someday, highly, but uh, I'm well, not highly unusual. It has never happened. Right. Um, we do have the parking on site, and like any of us, when you can't get a parking you spot, leave. you you carry on. Yeah. Um, but to have uh, that number of people descend at, at one time is not something that I would ever expect. Do you have dem um, Do you have uh, numbers yet for um, the number of people who come throughout the day when the when the on a non concert day when you know, people are just coming in to either have a have a, a pizza and a beer, or they're coming to pick up product. Um, do you have uh, any patterns on average visit? Sure. Um, I, I mean, we we track it. So um, with our beer to go, folks buying it advanced online. Yeah. So it's not going through the POS, and I'm seeing the ticker come uh, along. Uh, our beer to go. It sales far exceed our tap room yeah. sales. Um, yeah. So that's the majority of revenue um, that goes out. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, traffic, it uh, like any business, it fluctuates seasonally. Sure. We're, you know, in South Deerfield, people are really excited in the fall to come yes. to the evening or they want to stop by Yankee Candle during the Christmas season. So it's up and down depending yeah. on um, the time. But, you know, yeah. several hundred people a day come yeah. in. Um, right. We're very heavy daytime, early evening, family friendly. This yeah. is the place you end the night or anything <laughs> like that. And I mean, everyone who's been there, and we invite everyone to come if you haven't been. Pretty easy going, and yeah. and because we limit the amount of um, alcohol or drinks that you can purchase while you're there, people make their way. It's just it's a steady stream in yeah. and out. So yeah, Good. I just wanted to give the audience a chance to understand what what happens with the you know flow of, of yeah. people visiting and so forth um okay so all, oh all those, in, all those in favor yes thank you tim hill gi trevor mcdaniel i carolyn that's okay. okay so now so let's go the back hearing, to number uh, one yeah let's go back to the first one um it's incredibly important to me that we have we work some kind of language for updated emergency action plan constantly i mean this is something that's like a 
living document. I think there's all agreement by everybody. Mm -hmm. So, but conditionally on this one, before they can hold the five thousand yes, seat comp before concert. we increase anything, they need yeah. to have an fire uh, EMS. EMS. Everybody signed off. Sign off on it. Um, uh, I don't. I don't really think that's going to be an issue, but. Um, the, the only real issue is that I think that second driveway is really critical to the flow of people coming in and out of there. And I know we can't, well, we can't force DOT to do anything. And I know it's your intention because you want to get that to work and that flow to work. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Procedurally, am I allowed to? You, you are. Or? Yes, we can okay, still sorry, take I from the applicant, little... but no, not public. So with those events, we're not having increased parking so you're not going to have more vehicles right. than you otherwise would have with a 1500 or or anytime we're not adding additional parking on site so it's not there's going to be 5000 vehicles on yeah. on site and right we've done I, this with 3000 folks quite successfully and in, in concert right. with I I I yeah but our I, I guess our concern is that if there was a need to evacuate like active shooter right. or some mm -hmm. awful thing like that happened you need to be able to circulate your buses or other alternative transportation however what's ever in the plan off is you know, getting site. the 5000 out yeah evacuating some kind of evacuation and mass dot is unfortunately I mean that's something we can work with you. So we, we can work with you certainly with um, Joe and Natalie, and that has our reps, and they have uh, certainly shown that they are can produce for us. They're already planning. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I think this might help with your question. Obviously, in an ideal world, DOT would very yeah. quickly give us that uh, approval. However, we will work with. The police, fire, and EMS to make sure whatever path ends up being the best fit or the only possible fit happens yep. and we get sign off. So either way, okay. they're going to have to sign off before we can host that right. event. And so, yep. sorry to clarify, police, fire, EMS will have, yep. to, have to sign off. We're, right. we, um, we're not um, anticipating mass DOT no. sign off. No, us. I mean, we just but there is an them. existing curb cut. There, there is, we'll and just I work with you. Okay. Yeah, and I believe they're they're planning that northern section now. I think because they did all the the southern kind of part, and I think they're moving up north. So I believe that they're in works, correct, to to kind of next design the rest years, of that. Next two or three years, I think they're supposed to be up to Richardson's Candy Kitchen. Right, and doing some culvert work there for us. But um, so hopefully something's in the plan. But it'd be a good time to to getting work with them on that. Yeah, definitely. You, ever, you had your hand up? I just had a, a direct question to the board. Um, mm -hmm. Would you consider public safety to include the building commissioner since there is some responsibility on his part? Yes, I think they would. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I think, I think we identified is. that in the comments from the administration. Yeah, because that who signs off. I just don't want that left out. Yep. No, that's part of the occupancy permit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we definitely, yeah, but that's already assumed. Um. Yeah, I I think Trevor, we could work with Natalie and Joe and try to get that sorted out faster. Maybe with yeah, I mean they've they, always been a great partner and yeah, work with them. We'll we'll work with you with Natalie and Joe and thank you. But in the short term, uh, well, uh, until a new curb yeah. cut um, and the uh, access point can be created, even though one might have existed in in the yeah. past, um, do you feel comfortable? that you'll be able to work with the public safety officials here to, if you only have one egress. I do. Good. Um, I think, I guess that's mainly my only issue is seeing those signboards, temporary lighting for, for the officers that are working out there at that time, directing the traffic, because um, there'll be quite a bit of other traffic coming in and, and then just working on the the event plan. Um, Matt, is there um, is there language that would need to be? You mean Mark? Oh, excuse me, Mark. What am I oh, it's just the I'm sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, again, Mark Bornstein. Yes, um, thank you. Mark. So I, I think from my perspective, most of these conditions relate to the EAP event plan. Right. So I think 
the understanding is that the, the spirit of these comments is to have an updated, you know, as a condition of approval, the select board uh, will grant this approval subject to the requirement that um, following following this hearing, Treehouse Brewing Company will work with uh, the, all the respective departments, Deerfield Police Department, South Deerfield Fire Department, South County EMS, Department Board of Health, and Deerfield uh, Building Inspector to uh, prepare an EAP uh, event plan that substantially um, uh, meets the requirements set forth in this memorandum, whatever this is dated. Mm -hmm. So that way, if there's something that's not incorporated in there, but everyone, all the departments are comfortable moving forward, then this right. this, this this meets the, the, the intent of these comments. Um, so I think, I think with respect to the driveway, I think that is a difficult component. So I think, you know, uh, that should be excluded, but I think you can take the representation from Treehouse that they'll explore that with their engineers, trap consultants, mass DOT to see if that's a viable option. And the alternative, uh, the EAP event plan will be updated accordingly. And just by way of clarification, I know that Carolyn touched upon this, but uh, in terms of the Board of Health requirements related to expanding the number of bathrooms, I just want to clarify that that is for, for this particular year, a porta potty. Those, those will not that's be- correct. Physical toilet rooms. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that was that was clear. Yep, that is clear for sure. The beautiful ones, but yes, uh, the, the the best, the best. Well, the, the, yeah, qual quality, quality. I should say the quality, best quality. Yeah. <laughs> Don't overpromise, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> porta potties are still porta potties. <laughs> Any other comments, or do you want to? Did you have anything, Casey? I would make a suggestion that the board add this as a condition to the license. It, yeah, it will be. It will be. Yeah. We're, so, we're it. right. Good. Okay. So, so we don't have a motion at the moment. Yes. Right? No, I will make a motion to um, to uh, conditionally approve the application to amend Mass General Law Chapter One Thirty Eight Section Nineteen C and Farmer Brewer brewery pour permit to increase occupancy to 4,994 within the farmer brewery premises, um, conditional that the EAP as is updated and um, would have to be approved by- Updated all, and signed off. And signed off on by, by all the members that have been listed on this memorandum, Chief Paturic, um, DRP Police Department, Chief William Swayze, South Deerfield Fire Department, Acting Chief Tim Drumgould, or right. his replacement, um, South County EMS, Valley Bird, Board of Health Agent, Robert Walden, the Building Commissioner. Okay. And he'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing, hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. And then I will um, make a motion to approve the application and further amend Mass General Law Chapter 138, Section 19 C and Farmer Brewery Pouring Pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 138, Section 19 H to increase the total occupancy to 5,000 for the service of malt, beverage, wine, and distilled spirits throughout all licensed premises conditional on um, the same um, memorandum um, with the updated EAP event plan and signed off on again by uh, Chief John Paturic, Chief William Swayze, Acting Chief Drumgool, or his replacement, Valerie Bird, Board of Health Agent, Robert Walden, Building Commissioner. And then we would, uh, once I think that's done, we would then sign that application, correct? We, we get a signature, I assume, would come back to us or no? Or we just approve this and... I think we have to add the conditions to the license that get right. promulgated. Correct. So we need the time to be able to do that. Yes. All right. Second that. Um, yeah, for purposes of discussion, I'll second it. Thank you. So uh, One point of discussion, and I just wanted to ask the town administrator, uh, administrator Casey Warren, um, had raised one issue with me during the previous vote. And I wonder if you could just briefly explain your thinking. There was enough concern on the part of the public safety personnel about 
access and pass through mm -hmm. of vehicles that regardless of whether the select board requests assistance from Senator Comerford or Natalie and Natalie Blay, Representative Blay, um, I think there needs to be some identification that this has to get pursued because I listened to some pretty emphatic comments um, from staff that sat in that meeting. Yeah. And I think it's disrespectful I, I, to not acknowledge the fact that there really is a concern out there. That, and it's for public safety. It's nothing against you guys. No, it's so for specifically I, I the concern was. About that. Well, that's what the that's what the plan is. So I mean, if if it's not approved by Chief Swayze, it's not going to be approved that they have not our, come our up with John, a plan. Our, your John isn't satisfied. Chief Pachorg isn't satisfied. No, but then you like can you said, move off the people, then it won't get signed off on Casey. It can't. No, I'm not. It can't I'm, be. I'm not talking about the plan. I'm talking about recognition of this access that needs to go through DOT. We're talking that's about the part of the, DOT that's portion. Part that's of the plan. I realize it's in the plan, but the plan won't get signed off on if there's it no can't. access. It can't. If they don't have okay. access to get out. And they have not come up and shown demonstrated a way to act to to egress five thousand people in case of an emergency well, with only the one driveway. Then they're not going to get signed off. Am just, I wrong about that, just, Mr. Just, Swayze? So just by by clarification, um, the the parking permit uh, capacity is not going to be increased at the site. Correct. So, um, what we would be concerned about would be the people who don't have their vehicles there and need to be. Exited. evacuated or, or whatever right. so um you know it has I, to be a way to get people bust off or and so i'm assuming that our police and our fire and our ems everybody would not sign off on that if there was not a way to get people off there in a in a, a manner that is safe that's my biggest hesitation for approving this at all tonight and that's why i said as long as they sign off on it and they're right. comfortable and with the egress of right. 5,000 people right. out of that property one way or the I other that, by helicopter or another. Obviously, we didn't, we didn't clarify it because Casey didn't understand I'm asking that. the question because there's no timeline to obtain approval for a curb cut and thereby building a driveway. But Identify there is, the they cannot hold an event if they don't have a current EAP. Chief. My question is, so I don't cite, yep. for example, what's their liquor list? I mean, if we're not signing it for 5,000, do they lose their entire license? No, no. this is for an increase. This no, is for just the for increase. an increase. 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 Yeah. And occupancy. So increase. everything would stay the same. If if if, if you can't co feel comfortable about getting the people out of there. Yeah. It, so, you know, if the building, if the building occupancy based off of an architect says they can only fit 2,200 people in there, and they don't have a good plan to evacuate the other 2,800 people, than 2200 it is. Uh, it has to be. Has to be. Has to be. It has to be a current EAP plan before an event of 5,000 people. I mean, this is not open ended. Yeah. But yeah, I just feel kind of hand puppet us because, you know, it's just not EAP. It's all the other things that, you know, all the other comments mm -hmm. that may or may not be addressed in the EAP. So well, I mean, you can't. What you other can't, comments? What other comments? Is an evacuation? Is an so, evacuation? Yeah, the list right there is, you know, about you know, crowd management. You know, we're, the EAP is going to be a working document. It's unfortunate part is a, a lot of the details you know are going to have to get built in, and there's right. a lot of eyes to get dotted and keys to get crossed. And I just want to make sure that you know that's. That was my hesitation to move and vote on this tonight without having that listed in the EAP. But I know it takes time and I know you don't want to rush it. And I, you know, that's I, why I think it's worse to rush it. We so, trust, we so trust your year for their architect to get back to us with numbers. A year. Yeah. We haven't gotten that information yet. Okay. Oh, well, that doesn't help. I'm sorry, I was not aware of that, but I work closely with our team of architects weekly and I will get you whatever information um, that, that you were requesting. Yeah, I'm I, I'm sure you're committed because it's it's your interest to, to hold these events and not cancel them. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'm okay. comfortable, Trevor, that they're going to work to make sure that the the answers are 
Correct. And I have full faith in our chiefs to make sure that if it's not right. there, they're not going to approve it. Right. I mean, I, I approve it if it meets all, all of their safety concerns, because that's really what these are, our safety concerns. I, you know, we've talked about showing down a road on a, on a marathon or the decibel level here or there, really a lot of it has to do with the safety of the people who attend. And I know it's your first priority and I know it's the first priority of our chiefs. So that's my goal is to kind of make sure all that gets wrapped into that, um, the EAP. And it, that, Public safety is not negotiable and yeah. never has been. And we have never, you know, there is not, none of us have ever questioned that. So, I, I mean, I feel, do feel comfortable that there is a cooperative um, working relationship that you can get this done. Um, that's why I feel comfortable signing off on it based on, I know our chiefs aren't going to sign off on it unless they're happy. So, and they have and, our backing on that and they know that there's no, no pressure. It's, it's just not negotiable. So, um, so uh, just to clarify to again to Kate, you yeah. know, Casey's point, it would be the Mastio thing would be a requirement if you can't figure out any other way to get people off, you know, the camp. It's up to it's up to them to tell us how you manage it. And if if there is no other way besides the curb cut, then it's not gonna happen. Well, but understood. I don't believe we're talking about making a curb cut. A, condition I believe no, we're making the no EAP it's part condition. of having right. it's having the complete EAP yes and you know the, the emergency action plan is critical and however you manage that and to their okay. to their comfort level is is up to you all Understood. it either will happen or it won't happen so and that so we're putting it back in your lap to make sure it happens mm -hmm. and they're satisfied Right. I mean, that's in my mind what we're voting on tonight. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the, one of the key components to this is that the police and the fire and the, and the EMS have to be certain that they can take care of any emergency that develops there. And, um, you know, part of that is capacity, the crowd. And, and so um, until they're satisfied that uh, their concerns have been addressed, then, you know, that's going to be a sticking point. Okay. All right. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? What are we voting on? <laughs> the the 5,000? Yeah, the 5,000. 5, the number two hearing. To, to the weather decline and distilled spirits throughout all liquor li uh, license premises. Yeah, such a subject to all the conditions that we've been discussing. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, this can't happen unless we have a an approved EAP, right? Yes. The so you want to thing. rephrase Why it? Why don't you re re reread that just so there's no question, Trevor? Reread the uh, uh, hearing? No, reread what um, who has to sign off on the EAP. So the updated e the updated uh, EAP. We better say emergency plan. action emergency action, action plan, plan, which will incorporate all of the requirements to the satisfaction of the. Deerfield Police Department, South Deerfield Fire Department, South County EMS, Board of Health, and Building Inspector. Um, as noted in this memorandum, uh, noting that we're not forcing a DOT approval, but if that is not the, um, if that's the only way to get those people out of there, that would hinder their, right. uh, their approval, um, unless there's some other way to get people out of there safely if they've come up with another plan that meets the 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 uh, emergency action plan great uh so sign off would be john uh chief john paturic jr south deerfield police department or deerfield police department chief william swayze south deerfield fire department um acting chief uh tim drumgool the south county ems or his replacement uh valerie bird board of health agent robert walden building commissioner Okay. Okay. So, with that additional information, Tim Hilchi, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. Okay. Oh, that was torturous. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you but, very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. For Thank you all. Thank I really you. appreciate it. I appreciate the time. Yes. Yeah, so, yep. Yeah, just.
I guess the next step would be to get in touch with that working group again and whatever questions they have, let's get them done and yeah, let's get this done as quickly as we can satisfy the public yeah. safety officials. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yep. Have a good Bye -bye. night. Happy, happy early new year. year. Yes, happy new yes, year. Yes, happy new year. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is select board comments. Um, we worked really hard on the roads. Um, how, how do you want to um, cap capture what we've done so far, you all? Um, so this has been extremely long day already since it has been a long day it's eight o'clock already so um well do you do you want to talk over this press release or is this part of the road thing or no no the oh. press no i think we That's should the election thing later well it it, it relates to it, it but does? it was really me sort of trying to identify some of the things and, and okay frame some of the things that came up in an email i received from tim it was yep. really related to the earlier conversation you had about roads yeah. Um, I don't know that it's pertinent at this point. We need to strategize a bit more on the um, presentation on the ninth. Yes. And that was a, that was supposed to be a part of pushing information out. Um, we right. spent a lot of time going over the roads as opposed to strategizing That's how true. to approach it. That's so true. I don't know if you want to try to do that tonight or hold another meeting. I think it makes sense to have another meeting because I'm going to run out of steam tonight on the roads. Uh, well, I'm yeah. strategizing the messaging. Yeah, I guess the messaging about the roads, about the vote, um, why we need public participation in this election. and um, What gets passed out needs to be objective and factual. Of course. Yeah, it can't be tell somebody one way to vote or not. It's just no, no, no. It has our to be facts factual. on what, what so our monetary situation is based on what we've had to spend on roads so far, what roads we've fixed. I think... Uh, I don't. Do you mean do you want to have another strategy session on I, before the ninth, or just maybe, do it on the ninth? Maybe what would be good is I don't see. We how have to start without... pushing messaging out. So maybe one of the things that that Tim had sent over was sort of a question answer type format, and that's really what I did. I put Which is it, this press release? Yeah, it's a question answer type format, and I don't know that it captures everything. But if you take well, it and read it, send me comments about it. Can we read it right now so the public hears it? I don't know that it's ready for that. Oh, um, it doesn't that's the reason? Oh, maybe it it's does. really a draft. It's pretty deep in there. Um, it's really a draft, but it is intended it to draft. address some of the questions that may concern residents about why you would have a debt exclusion, what a debt exclusion is, and and what the process is. Um why we need this. I mean, the board said this multiple times. We've right. got millions of dollars in road damages to fix. Yeah. That, you know, we've worked in an emergency way to do that, but we have to pay the bill at the end of the fiscal year. So there's some tweaking that needs to happen. Really? I also would like to send it to John and Kevin and have them review it. Casey, Casey. my only concern is that we're not really um addressing what deficit spending is i mean we were allowed by the state to do 4.7 million in deficit spending mm -hmm. to repair to open our roads which is yeah 4.7 opens the roads stabilizes the situation and does not fix all the roads um we have many roads that are not fixed and that we're closing whatever we can list them if people want but we also have our snow and ice normally is a debt, you know, debt exclusion permission. We have permission to debt exclude the removal of snow and ice, but it still needs to be paid for by June 30th. So you have the snow and ice deficit, deficit spending. Spend. There's two different types top, of deficit spending. On top of the emergency deficit spending that we've already been authorized. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're put the brakes on Kevin going out to bid for the sidewalk snow removal because that's just increases the deficit spending. Right. Because we can't handle it at this moment in house during, you know, for, from the highway. So that's group. why I said maybe you guys should read it. And why don't you send me your Chris comments on it? 
Yeah, we just want to get them out as soon as we can, so people. Well, can, that's yeah. that's it. I mean, we we need to get some comments back because that's a good point. Why did we have to just deficit spend, and what is deficit spending? Yeah. Right. You know, and on the other hand, you also want to try to keep it relatively simple. Succinct. Right. Simple. But people people need to know why why didn't we budget for it? Well, you don't budget for millions of dollars. You don't sit on millions of dollars of taxpayer money without purpose. Right. And so there's the messaging so that you talk about right. and the messaging that people people want answers to some of these questions mm -hmm. from what I understand. So what we put out in a press release doesn't have to include every question right. that you may receive, but right. it's it, the highlights. Yeah. Well, so that's why I wanted you to look at it. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think what's missing is why don't we budget for um, emergency repairs? Because we don't know when the emergencies happen. It's mm -hmm. pretty straightforward. And then explain what deficit spending is. It's just permission to spend money that you don't have. Um, no, we to, have to true that up. By but the we have to way. pay it by the June thirtieth. Okay. It's going to get to be a rather large document. Well, well, that's why that's why we need to be careful about what we say. Right. You know, the because explanations can be more, and, and I'm sure people are going to ask you more questions. I know they've asked you these questions. Well, that's what I mean. People, I don't, I mean, these are the questions I got is why don't we budget it? And then we'll, why are we deficit spending? And, and and it's because we, there isn't any money, but, but we get permission from the state to do it, but it still needs to be paid by June 30th. And that's why we're in a bind. Um, One thing I think we need to be careful about is that we're having a meeting on the 9th to discuss all this. And we can't answer every anticipate every question that might be asked. This is already longer than I thought it should be, but really. Think, so what yeah. what did you have in mind when you suggested this to Casey? Well, I think I had one, two, one, two, three, four, five. I think there's another. Maybe there was five in mind. I think it there was, were four, and it got longer. Um, but well, there's in any case, these are all good changes. What happened? Yeah, that exchange. yeah. There's. Definitely, you know, I think it's relatively comprehensive. Um, <clears throat> I think the important thing that we're concerned about is that some sort of notice gets posted so people can see this, right? That's what the board indicated at right. the last meeting they wanted to see. And if we so wait until saying. our next meeting to post something, it's going to be like two or three days before the ninth meeting, which doesn't seem adequate to me. No. Yeah, no. we need to send this out sooner than that. So <clears throat> I don't have any... I don't have any objection to just sending this out. Yeah, I've been posting it online, and I think we need to do two things on our pop-up on our website, and that's we need to list the January 9th hearing first. Then we need to have the January 16 vote noticed, and maybe we either have a link or we have um, some way to get to a larger explanation of what the issues are. Right. And... This I framed it that way, but um, yeah. a friend of mine, a colleague of mine, um, had a an override vote that he was putting messaging out for. So I included a copy of that so you could see a different framework for it. Right. Um, and I thought that was a lot of words that it wasn't didn't necessarily, yeah. It was a lot. You and know. I got the impression you wanted it to be shorter, but to the extent that we can help people understand steps and need. Right. Um, I don't know. What do you What do you others think about this other thing that was put out? I mean, how do you want to shorten it? I guess how would you want to shorten something that we were providing to the public? I mean, I think maybe this this kind of thing could be done for the January ninth yeah. meeting. So it's a handout there that, that right. further explores issues and explains that look, if we spend money in a calendar year because the state gives us an emergency ability to do it. We still have to pay it off or have a plan in place to pay it off by the end of the fiscal year. And some of these things would be better explained in a document like this, which maybe Casey and Chris or PowerPoint. Um, what we want to be able to do is hand out some of this information to people, let them read it while they're, you know, while they're in the meeting. And rather than try to answer every question in the meeting, because I I think you reach a point in a meeting like this where 90 minutes is about the the attention span or the ability to do things constructively 
And beyond that, you would just end up saying the same thing over to each other and not really making any progress. So I don't know. What are your thoughts, Trevor? I think um, I just agree. I just think we should get something out there right away. Can't answer all the questions, um, and then and then definitely have a have a some sort of printout that just explains like these are the roads that were damaged roughly. This is how much we've spent already. This is how much we're in deficit. Right, deficit which is why spending. we had to have a list of sort of you what know. the expenditures are to date. Yeah. Right. This is this is what we're committed to. Right. This is what um you know long range, mm -hmm. three to five years, anticipating engineering or match, but not having the town fix it. It's through grant process. Right. I mean that's that's a hard concept when you when people talk about you know, I mean, when you add all this stuff up, there's millions and millions of dollars worth of damage, but the town isn't going to pay for it. And and we also intend to apply for the next supplemental budget, whatever difference we don't get this first round. So I, I yeah, know, I, I mean, think we need to be very streamlined about what we say because they, everything depends on whether the legislature could turn around and say, no, we have zero funding for you. They could have an emergency that requires a change. So yeah. we don't know, but we do know that by June 30th, we better have found a way to pay for this. Right. And and uh, to the point is the the legislature and the governor have already approved 15 million in emergency yeah. spending. So we will get some money. We'll get some money. And then the question is, you know, um, what do we need to communicate to people in, in this press release? And it seems relatively comprehensive. I mean, you could go into a lot of other things. Um, we but... could. And uh, ch changes to a spreadsheet that shows sort of what the expenditures really Yeah, I mean, I think I, could be a link. I think what we need to do is incorporate everything into typing that's written on Carolyn's little, every road that's being closed, worked on, ignored, get it all into this spreadsheet color coded and you know present that to people because we can't even have a meeting with the people involved in fixing the roads without wondering what we're talking about so we have to have a comprehensive list yep and so well, I'll just continue to work on it. On this last? No, we have to have a deadline, Carolyn. We have, we have to have I a know. deadline. Oh, I, 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 I realize that, but it's changing. It can't continue to change. I know, but it's changing based on our decisions tonight. Um, so where Which it said, road? why why is the second special election being held? It said it was apparent that there was not enough outreach to notify residents about the first election, December 5th, as evident by the low turnout of less than 10% of registered voters. The question, uh, the question failed by four votes. Uh, it was also clear that not enough information was provided to the public explaining why borrowing to pay for the emergency re road repairs um, says may be necessary, but is necessary. Because we don't okay. have another. Uh, this I think, is what I mean about comments. Yep, I yep. think that'd be good. Is necessary. Um, Otherwise, I don't know how we, I mean, we can't really cut that much out of it. And we would deplete any savings we have anywhere. So if any other thing happens, happen. yeah, we'd be in trouble. So I think that's great, though. Um, the last one, how can we, we're going to learn about the cost incurred. Oh, this is perfect. I think this is great. That made my one change. Well, what what, what time, time are we having the half related? What, what time are we having the info night? Six o'clock. Six, Six o'clock? Yeah. So we should put that in. Yep. In perfect. the FRS auditorium. Yep. Okay. I had to go back and look. Let's hope we I left it open because I hadn't found it there. by the time I was Like, here's we're going to get there and there's going to be three people show up. <laughs> so so that's why I think we. Well, let's I think get a, a robo call. Release gives out. us the opportunity to get more information out faster. Press release and then a robo call to let everybody know. I hate to book that place and everybody get over there and three people show up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's important. We've got, you know, information on the roads, the damage. We've got, I know a video has been produced of, of the damage so people can understand what, what that looked right. like. Um, and then we can, it can answer every, I'll sit there until midnight if people want. Well, me too. And I, and I have, 
scans of information here and how right. we're going to deal with the roads. I, but it's just, I mean, we made changes tonight. I mean, it's it's been constant movement. Okay. Right. I mean, the, the yeah, and uh, Work you know, um, we have to have a plan about when we're going to release this. It's the 27th. People are, you know, going away. So now I say we should decide to post this or yeah you know or decide to send comments to staff and then if if you think another meeting is necessary we just have to be able to post for it nope i'm good no, we, we have to approve this because tonight i would and, like um, also like i said i'm gonna give this to john and kevin and have them look at it too i would put change that is put 6 p.m and let it rip and i will take that from you so i don't <laughs> Thank you. And if anybody else has comments, I'm good with that. We'll add a, we'll... No, 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 no. I'm, I'm fine. No, I'm fine. Right? I, I, I... I separated one, two questions into one. Yeah, that's. You mean you, 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 yeah. You mean you made one of mine too fading fast here, or did it doesn't matter? It all looks good to me. Um, oh. I can try. What I can try to do is work with Chris to get it in spreadsheet form. Okay. Yeah, what we need to do is put everything I think it in order. Be so you've got multiple spreadsheets working right now. Yes, but the, these are incorrect. A lot of these are estimates. Right. And and so that was why Kevin and I spent four and a half hours today right. driving around and getting the current situation. Well, the spreadsheet, the color-coded spreadsheet was developed by John. So right. we yes. need to get his spreadsheet that changes can be made to. Instead of recreating the wheel, Carol. Yes, but what it does, it doesn't, it doesn't give you enough detail. On River Road, you talk about well, like Keats Road, massive erosion, twenty-two Keats Road, steam steam bank eroded so bad, threatening residents, taken care of. Okay, yes, it's taken care of, but then we have a hundred thousand dollars left for work on Keats Road. Okay. So you can insert a row. So no, there's a way to frame that in a spreadsheet. It's going to be pages what? extra. I think it's if much you better. Give people too many things to read, they are not going to read them. Yeah, That's why I, it could I'm be the working this... off of this one and establishing a, a spreadsheet based on this and not on the estimates. Right. Is going to be the best thing. I think moving the actual cost from one spreadsheet to another is not the most difficult read. Very simple. Copy page. Yes. But it's not descriptive in the way that it should be. Okay. But it, it is. Carolyn, like, there's no reason you can't add stuff when you're talking about it. But if you don't provide a safe way for people to understand, they're not going to hear you. Well, one of, the, one of the problems here on this color-coded one, right? Is it goes from Wapping Road, Wapping Road, Greenfield Road, Depot, Wapping Road, Bittersweets, Mill Village, Richardson's, Pine Nook. No, stay on the roads. That's right. That's what I was trying to do here. Stay All the roads, the roads stay in the same place. You don't go from one road to another and then back to the other road. It, it just doesn't work. That's what we did. So here. we stayed on the road. We said what was done, what was needed to do. And that should be on the spreadsheet. We we did it in three pages here, and now and that is combined. All the information from here is on here, but it's correct and up to date as of today, or not tonight because we made a couple more decisions. And but maybe what you need to do is just say, look, this was the picture as of seven o'clock or eight fifteen on the twenty seventh of December. Right. Anything else that's then developed since then will yes. have to be addressed. Right. Because you can continue every day to we find another problem. Day and it still would get us to the point where we weren't messaging to get people out to the polls. Because it only matters that we get the vote. Like that. I mean, we this need to be accurate, but for the ninth and for the sixteenth, it's a clear reason. They don't need to know every road, every issue, every million thing that we're doing. They need to know we have a deficit. They've elected yeah. leaders of the town to make decisions for them. We need to do this. If they want to get into all the nitty gritty, be my we, guest. Yes, but you could put down Little Meadow Road, not done. Sure. Depot I'm Road, closed. It's more than they need. 
No, I mean, you got to go through each road, though, Trevor. That's why this is not accurate. See, I see this is that. what I would say, that this this whole thing was not organized properly. The first thing should be the location. Right. Okay, so you have River Road. there. Then you have locations on River Road. Right. You do that, all that. Then you say next road. Mm -hmm. You have all the things that are on that road. You can't have action. And then, you know, what, what did you do on River Road? What did you do on Greenfield Road? It doesn't work that way. Exactly. Um, so it, it can be reorganized. It can. And the, the thing is that we have to stop adding to it because we know it's an incomplete picture. Right. So, uh, so I, I will work with Chris that we can do a 1227 update. And that's the end of December. Okay. And that's the closest we're going to We get. have to approve this before we can. Well, have... I think if it's what I, that was my concern about not getting to this when we spent so much time going over road updates is we didn't get to a strategy. And I really am concerned that if yes, information is... does not go out that's succinct, people are not going to understand. Yes, but this is inaccurate and not complete. That's... So, None of that needs to go out. Just put the press release out. We'll deal with all yeah. of this at the night. Don't send them a million I'm things. Ask you how much they're looking. Fine, we'll tell them on the night, and we'll tell them at the meeting. I mean, we'll... basically, we're talking Don't about send it. At all least... of this information out to yeah. every voter. They just get overwhelmed. It's way we're too much. We're looking at we're looking at everything. It's we're basically looking at information. Current expenses exceeding two million dollars. Yes, great. You know, or or current expenses, current payments exceeding X amount of money, right? right. With other work with expectation with with much more work necessary in the next three to five years. Yeah, um, but I think this press release. Um, what are you by you itself? Know? Just yeah, yeah. Let it go. Yeah, it's ready to go. And days. is there a way in that pop up box? So they have the the January 9th thing, the first item. Sure. Public I can, hearing. I can figure that then, out. Can you no, put links in that thing? Mm -hmm. still need a, so then you have a link to the press release. Yes. yes. Then you have 16 vote. And I don't know that we need to put anything else in there. Sure. Um, but not you. Um, I think that is what we can do. Yeah, I'll and make then that happen. In the background, we can work on what is the most logical way for people to see things. My mind works, you know, alphabetical order, reverse alphabetical order, or most damage, but have all of it listed in one place on River Road. Have all of it. So um, for political reasons, we might not want to talk about, um, you know, Pine Nook Road first. It's the most expensive, but, you know, that's just how things went. It was it was devastated. Well, you couldn't yeah. get emergency vehicle. But you can get... Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Nobody could get out. <clears throat> but having having um who can help Carolyn with this Chris, spreadsheet? I've already told Chris the he's gonna poor thing, he's gonna have to work with me and from my yeah. notes. That's okay. Yeah, either make like it happen. Yeah, okay. Good. And um you know and whatever rough draft he comes up with, I can get my husband to fiddle with it because he is he's perfectly capable of dealing with this. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm I'm have every faith. I I just think that everything from each road needs to be in the same place. Like this green thing, I agree with Carolyn. It, it, it bounces can, all over the place. You can't even find figure out what your what's going on. So and I don't mind the color coding. So if you can work that into it. Sure. Because I don't think any of these things necessarily are green. It, it should be clear that, you know, we've we've made emergency repairs, you know, so that people can travel on the roads safely. Uh, doesn't mean it's complete fix. Oh no, that's that was my problem with the color coding. It wasn't. Yes, the road is open, mm -hmm. but we haven't done anything. Yeah. So, all right. Um, so, can we? Are we agreeing that we're going to send out this press release or yes. post yeah, it? Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Okay. So, do we need to vote on that? Tweak, nope. I'll tweak it a couple. There's a couple things I want to tweak. No vote needed. Okay. No vote needed. So, consensus. Um, can we set a time on when we're going to put it up? I don't want it to go up on Friday afternoon. When do you want it? To well, it's up? Wednesday today, so let's plan on putting it up tomorrow. You know, by like two o'clock. 
because if we don't have a deadline, you're never going to get. Mm -hmm. Okay. At least I never was good without deadlines. <laughs> okay. Can I please make a motion for minutes? Yes. Yeah. Go make a motion. I make a motion to approve the minutes of December 13th, 2023, 4 p.m. Uh, with one correction. Um, uh, right where McDaniel expressed the river road may need to be restricted to where it says one way traffic, one lane traffic. That's the only fix on that. Yes. So that would be it. Any Anytime. You hear the words one way in the next three weeks. <laughs> Ask yourself whether it's one lane. One, or one, lane. One, one lane. Okay. Second. Great. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, that's aye. Great. I'll make a motion to approve the December 18th, 2023 minutes at 11 a.m. Um, Let me, I got to get to that page. <laughs> um, didn't you make some adjustments on that, Tim? I don't know. Yes, uh, that was also the same. And it's revised. revised. Yeah, I revised both of them based yep. on comments. Um, yep. And the 1218 ones were including the correction from one way okay. to one lane. All right. Great. Great. I just want to make sure. All right. Um, do you second that, Tim? Uh, yeah, second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Thank okay. you so much. Um, uh, recommendation on election worker pay increase. I just want to know, do we have it in the budget? I know she's getting some extra money, but if it's not budgeted, we can't really, um, do it. it although I believe in it and I think we should need, need to change it, but I just don't know what the, the budget line shows. And we're talking about pay freezes and all this other stuff right. to, to all of a sudden add it. I, I, I think it makes sense. I think we add it to next year's budget. Um, and, and unless Brenda and Casey, Cassie can show us that there's money in this budget to um, afford that change. So maybe we put it on hold to the next meeting. Yes, just gather some maybe. information. When Brenda comes back, let's look at the account, factor it out. I think it's it's so vital that people um, do our elections and can facilitate them. They do a great job when they're here. I know a lot of them just volunteer because it's in their heart to do that for for um, for their community to make sure people are safe and can vote um, freely and easily. And if we can help, you know, make sure that they're paying at least minimum wage to do it, uh, I think that's, well, that's fine. Thing. I don't even know. So it's the way Kathy explained it, um, there's different feelings about that. Different law firms take that differently. Mm -hmm. um, by and large, paying minimum wage at least for certain election workers makes yeah. sense but you've got election workers who have different responsibilities right. and a higher level of responsibility right so that's why she presented you a tiered request it, it looks great i just want to uh, know it's in the budget i that's don't all. i i honestly don't know with brenda not here right um i wasn't sure how you would take that i do think it would be useful to get some comments from brenda yep. but i also know that cassie is anxious to be able to tell people so yeah well, to the extent work. that she asked us to put it on the agenda and ask for your blessing, we've we've asked. Yep. Um, what right. you say after I stop talking is up to you. Just need just need information. So we can't add, have it in the we budget. Can't add to our a deficit spending. Let's just find out next week. Is it in the is it in the budget or not? When Kate, right. when Brenda comes back, I have no problem with paying. No, I more. it's absolutely but vital I, to do. I just can't see that we can add to already deficit issue. Yep. Okay. Um, P3 project professionals OPM contract extension uh, extension. Is this um that is all said it should the signature it should be in the signature file. Just right here. The contract. Yep. And we were correct. unsure last time with some information. Did did we get all that squared yeah. away? Yeah, okay. we squared away what might be necessary or not in this case. Okay. Um to add to a contract. Um is it just a uh, chair sign? So make a motion. Did we move this um, question already or not? No, no, you haven't. So I would make a motion to approve the um, P3 Project Planning Professionals uh, OPM contract extension amendment. Where is this in my packet? Um, I, I don't know. It's right here. And then there's waving of a button. It, it was not in the packet because okay. I wasn't sure if there were changes. And okay. No? Well, okay, let's right. make it sure. And then there's also a, um, oh, so I don't know if we voted on that yet. No, let's vote on that first. So this is the contract that you saw two weeks ago when we talked about it. Yep. 
So I made the motion. Second. Uh, just looking at it. Just. Okay, so this is, you just have to sign this, Karen. Right. You have to authorize the chair to sign, but is this one that you're comfortable with as being on the building committee? Um, well, it, it I don't this is standard. Yeah. I mean, this is for the OPM's work. Yeah. Yeah. That's already been done, right? You know, the, the, it hasn't the, been built for. Yeah. Yeah, it's the extension based on the original contract. So, in other words, you got paid some stuff long ago and far away. And now going forward, this is what he's going to be paid for the rest of the contract. Yes, unless there's something that changes that would have to go through both parties. Right. Okay. Right. Um, motion and the second. Well, it's all motioned and seconded. Yeah, it's been motioned and seconded. You second yeah. Right. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. And then there's a, a waiving of a butter list fee for uh, GGD Consulting Engineering. So does the board have a request to ask the assessors to waive the butters list fee? I don't even know what this is about. <laughs> I don't, I'm yeah. sorry. Why, why would I ever do this? Or is it for, for what? For the Leary lot? Or just... So, Tim, you had requested that I add this to the agenda. Uh, it's the library. I believe it's a subcontractor. Um, who has requested an abutters list and normally they would need to pay a fee right because it's a town project it would ordinarily be waived but you you, you just request a waiver yeah. to the assessors whether they choose to do it you, so you, this is just a, re a request to ask the assessors to waive the fee okay yep it's a town project so why not yeah, yeah. so money. did somebody make a motion you want me to uh yeah. i make a motion to approve the the licensing authority uh certification to waive the fee for a subcontractor of the library contractor gdb consulting engineering okay so i'll second that motion all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn ness aye okay let's see if they do all right um finance reporting yes so campaign finance reporting, Casey? It's an email from, yeah. we received an email that this is now due. Um, it's got some background information for you from passing. Um, I think, I don't remember what the deadline is, but I think she mentions it in her email. So for purposes of notifying you of what you have to do, I think you both all have to respond to her. And to the extent that she sent the email, not just to you, but to other elected boards, they have to comply in the same manner. I, if I understand it correctly. So this also allows you to publicly say, hey, all elected officials subject to the law need to respond to Casey so she can send this stuff in. Okay. So what are we looking at now is what I'm trying to figure out. Is this the thing about raising pay for election workers? No, this is a campaign finance. If, you if have you to report run for election, you need election. to yeah. let As people know official. or fill it out that you haven't Everything. raised any money. I don't, but even if you haven't run, like uh, that's what I sent her a message. Do I need to fill it yes. out because I didn't run for anything? I think Jen sent this to us every year. Yeah. Jen Wallace when she was working here. Yep. So is this in my packet or is this just a request? It's just a request. There, there, there there's an email. Um there's information about it, but there's no form to fill out here. That there is an email in your an email, email with a form, but the form is not here in the packet. Okay. Yep. So was the email from Cassie yeah. asking yes. us to fill out a form for yep. her? Yep. Okay. So we need to do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But if you say this out loud in front of everybody else, maybe they hear louder. Okay. Everybody, please fill out your campaign finance guide. Those guys. of you that are, you know, those elected. of you that are elected officials. <laughs> okay. Please reach out to Cassie and get that done for her, for you. Um. There's a fillable form. I will resend it to you all. Okay. Thank you. So next, um, next division of local service and informational bulletins. We can skip that for yeah, now. Let's skip that. Um, FY twenty four budget reductions, service reduction. We this to death. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We've done the road, road updates. Road updates. We've worked on that for over an hour. Um. We're not doing anything with budgets at the moment. At the moment. Is no. finance committee starting on the second? Or June, what? No, June, uh, January, January 22nd. 8th. January 8th or the 22nd? 8th? 
FY25 budgets are due January 8th. But their, so their first meeting, committee meeting they so. start meeting on January 22nd. Okay. 22nd. They're going to meet on Mondays. And this is why personnel boards meeting had to change. Is they're going to meet on Mondays to the extent that they can. They will try to shorten meetings. Okay. When they have con when there's another board that's meeting on a regular day. Okay. Uh, done with the permits, right? Yep. Yeah, Larry lots. We we're not doing anything more on the Larry lot. No update is there. Uh, yeah, I do have is. an update. There's a preliminary budget that Berkshire Design worked up for us. So um, an opinion of probable cost. And, and my question is, is do we have enough in ARCO to cover this? Not as it currently stands. Right. So we're going to have to make some changes. Um, where is the budget? So I didn't see that. $680,940. And currently, as I remember, the board has allocated $495,000 and change from ARPA for the Leary Lot project. Well, then we took back the um, HVAC. Right. True. So that right. does give so, a little bit of a cushion. Right. My suggestion is get a report from Brenda when she comes back yes. about what's been expended and, and then, let's look, then at this look at this at the next meeting. Yep. Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right. Um, yeah. And I'd also like to just understand this. Um, it says 10% contingency. So, yeah, you got it might cost less, might cost more. 15% contractor ONP. 15%. What is that ONP? Must be, um, my guess would be. We call it something different on the wastewater treatment camp project. Yeah, is it is it oversight for, for the project? It might be. It might be. I can ask Jeff. Yeah, yeah it, it, is that yeah yeah? Is that what you're saying, Jeff? I'm not sure. Clerk of the work, there's something that's mm -hmm. over yeah, it. But that's what I'm wondering. You know Just what? Fifteen percent is the fifteen percent based on the five hundred forty-four. Is it based on, you know? After you got the ten percent contingency, and <laughs> good question, you know, we have to do some math. Sure. That um, <laughs> uh, that'll be a daytime task for me. Yeah, right. You know what? I still can't find that budget. What's the, oh this one? Yeah, it uh, should be right after the the um. Oh, here it is. Yeah, here it, yeah. Is. Here it is. Okay. Back side. Oh, back side. Yeah. Okay. All um, right. Can I? Uh, oh, no, wait. The election budget. Yeah. Okay. I'll look at this. Okay. Let's just wait on this. Yeah, one. and just see what we yeah. get. Because yeah, yeah, the first time I've seen that. Yeah. Exactly. I didn't. I didn't review this. Yep. And I think I have some questions. I'll make a motion to um. Uh, to appoint the following people as election officers in town in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter Fifty Four Section Twelve. Um, Cassie has sent us, our town clerk has sent us a, a thing. She's, uh, she is submitting of the following list of people who are willing to serve as election workers. The term of office is from September 1st, 2023 through August 31st, 2024. Unenrolled would be Julie Cavaco, John Jack Cavaco, Diane Martin, and Cheryl Bahanowitz. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Tim Helchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And thank you so much for your service. Before we leave that topic, um, there was another last minute addition to the poll worker appointments that if the board is comfortable making tonight, oh, um, it is in the signatures folder. It's along with the appointments that were made at, I believe, two meetings ago where there were two individuals on it. There's a third one now that has a student volunteer. Oh, Allie um, Pierce. Oh, great. Yes, sure. And and it could be could be that there's an extra W in Cheryl Bahanowicz's name. I'm yeah, not, oh, positive. But catch. Yeah, we'll check on that. Okay. And so, you want to make a motion on that one? Who's next? Um, Allie Pierce. I'll make a motion uh, and thank um, a student volunteer, Allie Pierce. Wonderful. Well, second, second that motion. All those in favor. MLGI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, we have uh, we turn? no, we have the um, uh, unenrolled and the Democrats. Oh, did that last time. Okay. Yes, yeah. that was the one that was previously but made, but there work. wasn't. Um, so Cassie realized that there wasn't a signature page that we had oh. given to the board, and just to Got memorialize it. this, should like signatures on okay. it. Yep. All right. Uh, um, okay. 
there is mail. Uh, there is, I, I do want to acknowledge Sarah Allen's um, a concern about she feels has, and I know she has felt that her children have not been safe, even when the sidewalks are, are not, when they are clear. And now she's concerned because sidewalks may not be clear. Is this for the sidewalk busing? No, it's um, oh. it's walking to school. You know, kids are not able to get on the bus if they live in town. Oh. Um, I I I want to acknowledge that because it is a concern. Oh yeah. Okay. Good thoughts. Figure that out. Yeah, I don't want to lose that. There was a comment I think I saw on social media about just remind. I wanted to remind people to be um, cognizant. I know buses are giant and yellow and have red flashing lights. Um, there's also small vehicles that aren't yellow that have little red flashing lights that pick up. Um, you know, sometimes disabled kids or just just maybe delivering kids outside of a school bus route um but there is um a member in town that that um runs this service and is very concerned that people are not stopping for um for these small buses um cars whatever they may be but they are traveling uh students to and from school and a lot of people are just zipping right around them because they don't think they're a school bus so if you see yellow flashing lights red lights on top of a vehicle um, it looks like they're picking up kids. Please stop and obey all the same rules as a giant yellow school bus. That was it. I saw that happen the other day. Yeah, it's it's dangerous, and it, and they're really it is. Yeah. really they're very careful. careful. They're like yeah. on a limb there, trying to get the kids in and out because they have to get out of the vehicle usually to let the you know to help the students onto their vehicle, and it's not like just you open the duct door as a bus it's they're they're also out helping so it's very dangerous if they're not stopping yep That's okay all. it's um i'll take a motion to adjourn motion to adjourn second all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn s aye thank you all very much and have a happy new year